So Vanderbilt will be back to receive. Zirkel will kick it off. He's got it at the 35. And here we go. Georgia and Vanderbilt. We are underway. And a fair catch is called right at the goal line. That was uh, Jaden McGowan, who's electric. But he decided to call for a fair catch right at the goal line. All right, time now for starting lineups presented by Papa John's. We we'll take a look at Ken Seals, Ross, and what he possibly could do at QB. Really enjoyed our conversation with Ken yesterday. How about just the coaches and the players we talked to and how much they raved about him? I mean, to go from starting as a true freshman to third string last year and even stay at Vanderbilt, they're all really happy he's getting this opportunity. Right, keep an eye on Will Shepard. He's at the bottom of your screen for Vanderbilt. They'll do a lot of motioning with Junior Sherrill and the like. Out of the gun to start the game on first down. He's hit as he throws. Pass is complete to the 30-yard line. Quincy Skinner fell down as Smile Munden makes the tackle. All right, let's take a look at Vanderbilt's offense presented by Papa John's. Guy that jumped out to me watching the tape was Gunnar Hansen, the left tackle. 268 snaps this year, zero sacks. That's the most in all of FBS football. The snaps are the most without those sacks. It's incredible. They've only allowed 13 sacks so far this year. It'll be second down and five from the 30-yard line. McGowan's in the backfield. Vanderbilt did say they wanted to get the ball into his hands a little bit more. They've got Justin Ball, the tight end, who's roaming. You can see him go to the slot at the top. On second down, pass is complete to the near side. Now that's Quincy Skinner, who's got a first down up to the 38-yard line. Kamari Lassiter makes the tackle. Our Papa John starting lineups. We look at the Georgia Bulldogs defense. Well, and Jamon Dumas Johnson just jumped off the tape last week against Kentucky. Had a couple sacks, was in the backfield. Glenn Schumann, their defensive coordinator, said, we kind of go how Pop goes. The whole team calls him Pop, and he was <laughs> flying around Athens last week. So it'll be first down. Ball up to the 38-yard line. Cedric Alexander is on a wing spot to the right. He's usually a tailback. Seals takes the snap. He's got a little time. To the middle. Pass is complete. But again, it's McGowan who they want to find. They find him out of the backfield for first down. Well, you said it, Tom. Watch McGowan. He's lined up in the backfield. Just going to run a little angle route here. He's a receiver by trades. You get him matched up on a nickel like Tyke Smith. He is a really tough cover. I mean, he won the state of South Carolina in 100 meters running a 10-6. Vandy mm. has some legit receivers here. Now they've got the veteran Patrick Smith. Cheeks in the backfield. Young man from South Jersey. Seals will keep it himself. That was not a good read on his part. Wrapped up and taken down behind the line of scrimmage. Marvin Jones with the sack. This kid's got some ability, doesn't he? He absolutely does. He's going to be the left side of your screen. Watch him come in. This is a read play, and I'm not sure who Seals was reading right there because Jones is unblocked on the backside. Obviously, that play would have been more successful if he had given the ball. All right, last week, Georgia had three sacks against Kentucky. Kirby Smart was happy about that. They get their first sack here. It'll be second down and 12 from midfield. In motion is ball, the tight ends. And Seals will fake the handoff, zips it. His pass is complete. Humphreys into the open field, inside the five. Touchdown, Vanderbilt. A step in the right direction. 49 yards. Listen, they've been shut out the last two games against Georgia. I just told you, watch Humphreys Miller's screen. It's just an in-breaking route. It's a miscommunication by the Bulldog defense. Nobody was covering Humphreys, and he also can fly. I just talked about these receivers Vanderbilt has. Humphreys also ran a 10-600 in high school. He's only a true freshman. Wow, the point after high snap handled well. Point after is good. There was a lot of daylight. And the Commodores, their first touchdown against Georgia since 2018 on the opening drive. 
There's a four sale sign on the big up. Back to Nashville where Vanderbilt scored their first touchdown since Georgia in 2018. Watch it. Kamari Lassiter, the corner, and Tyke Smith, the nickelback. Humphrey's going to run a post. Neither one of them covers him. You don't see this very often against Georgia. It's a miscommunication. Lassiter thinks Tyke Smith's going to take him. Tyke Smith ran with the first receiver. Humphreys is wide open, and with a 10, 600 meter dash, nobody's catching him once he gets the ball in the open field. And it did seem like it was a 100 yard dash, didn't it? Right, and look right now, Kirby Smart's talking with Tyke Smith. So yeah. They're going over the formation right there. It's a coaching point. And he's saying, listen, when they're stacked like that, we want you to run with whoever makes an in breaking route. Reminder, Humphreys leads all SEC freshmen in receiving yards, so he just added to it there. So 7-0 Vanderbilt, 12.07 to play, opening quarter. And Georgia will get the ball back. They can return this one if they choose to, but they will not. All right, so our lineups presented by Papa John. We begin with the starting quarterback for the, the Bulldogs, Carson Beck. I've been really impressed with how he's assumed the role. Unbelievable. I mean, the last six quarters, he's 44 of 55, 627 yards, five touchdowns. He has really taken his game to another level, and so has the Georgia passing attack. And Kirby Smart told us yesterday, he said, listen, he did it right. He did it the way you're supposed to do it in college football. He waited for his opportunity and made himself a better teammate over the last year. That's Bowers in motion. We'll call his name a lot. They quickly dump it off to the outside and pass is complete for a first down for the Bulldogs. Let's take a look at the offense presented by Papa John's. I was really impressed with the right tackle, Xavier Truss. He played left guard earlier in the year until Amarius Mims got hurt, moves out to right tackle. He brings a physical edge to the Bulldogs' offensive line. All right, we've got an injured player on the field, on the far side of the field. So we'll take a timeout and be back under 12 minutes to play, first quarter. Pretty a banged up secondary. They're without height, and now Trudell Berry was the injured player. He walked off okay, but they're going to assess him in the tent. Yeah, and obviously B.J. Anderson's hurt as well, so they're arguably down their two starting corners. To lose Berry would be significant, especially against this Georgia receiving court. Well, Carson Beck completed that first pass to Dylan Bell, and keep an eye on Bell. He's become a hybrid for Georgia. Dejon Edwards is in the backfield. In motion is Lovett, the transfer from Missouri. On first down for the 36-yard line, Beck will throw again. Pass is complete to the outside for Meeks. And Meeks gets out along the sidelines to about the 43-yard line. Our Papa John's starting lineups. Let's look at the Vanderbilt defense. Keep your eye on number one, C.J. Taylor, all game. He is by far the most explosive player on defense for Vanderbilt. He's fantastic. He was excited. As you see, Rosemey Jack Saint now mm. gets up after that game a little bit banged up. That was Bowers, by the way, who made that reception on second down. They hand the ball off. It's Edwards, and Edwards trying to get to the edge. Nothing's there. He's wrapped up by Ethan Barr and taken down. It'll be a loss of two on the play. It'll be third down. Terrific start. Let's watch Ethan Barr. He's going to see it all get back and scrape all the way out. It starts with the defensive line jumbling up everything inside. Dijon Edwards had to bounce outside, and Barr was right there. Yeah, here's the thing. They were talking about the run game, how they had to be better at it. They also have to be better on third downs. Beck working out of the gun. McConkey is in. He's in the slot down at the bottom of your screen, closest to the line. Beck looking to throw, looking left. He's hit. He lost the football. The Cosmo came in and made the hit. He knocked it loose, and Vanderbilt recovers. Sewell fell on top of it. Wow, Aeneas to Cosmo. I mean, you could not possibly have a better start if you're Vanderbilt. Watch the Cosmo come off the edge. They also brought pressure from that side. So the Cosmo comes in. He gets the strip, and I think he might have helped from Sewell to pick it up. Trust the guy who's just talking about whiffed on the Cosmo. And we talked about the anatomy of an upset. Tom, get a big explosive play, get a turnover. Vanderbilt is two for two already. Yeah, they'll get it with great field position. It'll be first down for the 32-yard line. Great point on the field and time in the game 
to take a shot if you have one you like if you're Vandy. Last 10 turnovers converted into 17 points. Seals in trouble. He's rolling the pocket, throws on the run toward the goal line, and it is dropped. Shepard tried to come back and make a circus catch. He's fortunate that wasn't picked off. Steele threw it up for grabs. There's a little bit of contact there. I mean, Bullard was kind of holding on to Shepard right there in the end zone. That's how much faith they have on Shepard throwing him the ball in the end zone in double coverage. All right, so Vanderbilt wins versus top 10 teams. The last one came in 2007 against South Carolina. Second down and 10 from the 32. Trips to the near side for Vanderbilt. Off the play fake. Seals to throw. Sets up the screen. Passes completes. And not much is there. It's a gain of just a couple yards. Here's his last drive. Boy, he really was able to find some receivers, wasn't he? Seals has gotten off to a very fast start for the Commodores and Humphreys. Going for the touchdown, and Vanderbilt has a chance for another one. But again, they have not been good on third down. By the way, Ross, the last couple weeks. Excuse me. They're going to say that that pass was not complete. That he was down. His knee was down as he let that throw go. Got to be very careful here if you're Seals. They're right on the edge. By the way, yes. A field goal range for Vanderbilt. So they need at least some more yards to give it a shot. Late clock was down to one. Seals pressure's coming. Pocket collapses. Throws. Pass is complete. He has McGowan on the near side. So to the 29-yard line. Now, what do you do here in fourth down? Interesting decision right now for Clark Lee. He told us he likes kicking field goals from about the 30-yard line and in, depending on the distance to go on fourth down. I think you got to try to keep the momentum you have right now, right? You got to try to go up two scores after that strip sack and mm. fumble. Yeah, so Borchilla is on for the field goal attempt. Six of seven so far this year. This will be a 47-yard field goal attempt. He was booting them from 51 in practice earlier today. Good snap, good hole. Kick is on its way. It does not have enough. It looked like it hit a wall and just came on down. Again, that's the open end of the stadium. So with 8.38 to play here in the first quarter, Vanderbilt on top seven to nothing. They could not convert the turnover into points. Just not enough leg. End of the stadium, but that set certainly hit a wall. And look at that, by the way. Look at the jumbotron. Right. <laughs> it's swaying. You don't often see a jumbotron swaying like that, but they got it up there hanging. All right, so the missed field goal. Uh, George will take over. First out, Bowers in motion. Beck looking for Bowers. Finds him on the outside. He's got blockers. And he's taken down after a gain of maybe three yards. Invesco brings you today's scholar athletes for Georgia. It's the backup tight end Oscar Delp. We'll see him a lot. And for Vanderbilt, we've already seen Ethan Barr. Invesco is proud to support student athletes on and off the field with a donation to both schools to their general scholarship funds. Bowers again. And Bowers is stood up and knocked down. Maloney was there. We're going to see a lot of C.J. Taylor on Brock Bowers today. Third catch already for Bowers, but Vandy doing a pretty good job of tackling him after he catches. He's so good typically with the run after catch stuff, but it sets up another third down and another opportunity for Vandy to get off the field here. Yeah, last year there were 14 third down conversions by Georgia against Vanderbilt. Vandy up 7-0. Under eight minutes to play here in the first quarter. Bowers in motion will line up as the H-back. Oh, it's fumbled. Beck lost the football, was picked up by his offensive lineman, <laughs> Van Pran, and Ross Tucker, you're going to love that. Oh, he got a my first down. gosh. Are you kidding me? It's a fumbled quarterback snap that the center picks up and runs. Watch the center, Van Pran. He never got it up. Wow. He never got the ball up. Nobody from Vandy jumps on and it. And he palmed it. They're <laughs> on his legs, and Van Pran, the big man, jumps over the D tackle. Wow. Breaks a tackle, busts out a spin move, and that's Georgia's longest run of the day. That's tremendous. So first down of the 44-yard line. They hand the ball off. It's Edwards, and Edwards has the edge. Stumbles, gets his bearings. Oh, he makes one man miss. What a move down to the 35-yard line. 
They'll mark him at the 36. It was Riley who's, who got jukes. Edwards' stop-start is just outrageous. Yep. He's not the fastest running back, but his ability to stop and start. Watch right there. I mean, how do you put the brakes on like that? Yeah, they'll go back to the line of scrimmage quickly on first down. Beck looking to throw. Steps up, just lobs it. He's got Edwards. Edwards this time inside the 30 is stood up. He's down to the 29. Rinaldi and Barr in on the tackle. We've got an injured player on the field, Christian James. And we'll check on it. Nope, it's Agu. Agu is the injured player. We'll be back right after this. Ready to go if need be. What a great story he is. One of three defensive linemen for Vanderbilt from across the pond. He was born in Ireland, moved to London. They've got two defensive linemen from Germany. And these are legit players. I mean, you watch them. And are just going to get better and better. Absolutely. The other thing we're seeing right now, Tom, Vanderbilt is not going to give up explosive plays. The whole game plan today is to not let Georgia get the big plays. So Carson Beck's five for five, but it's only 34 yards. It's less than seven yards per completion because Vanny does not want to give up the big play. Beck's going to have to stay patient and keep throwing the underneath stuff. Kendall Milton checks it. He's in motion out of the backfield. Beck looking toward the middle, looking toward the end zone. Rosamie Jack Saney overthrows him. That's a good sign that he's back in. It'll be incomplete. It'll be third down. Of course, just when I say that, Georgia takes a shot and throws <laughs> me Jack Saints wide open. They'll be coming from the left side of your screen. Good pass protection, and it's a dropped coverage by Vanderbilt, and that's a missed opportunity for Beck. He's been so good the last couple games, but that should have been a touchdown for Georgia. Well, I think if you're Vanderbilt defensive coordinator, Nick Powell, you're happy about the way the team has played so far, but you can't allow that. Milton stays in the game for Georgia on third down. Beck hands the ball up. Milton right up the middle. Inside the 20 to the 15. Trying to get to the outside. Stumbles inside the 5. And he's out of bounds close to the 2-yard line. Kendall Milton and Edwards both are getting healthier. And that is a huge boost for Georgia. Well, and watch the linebacker. The, the linebacker just fell. For Vanderbilt. That was supposed to be right there. And a little bit of the tush push here by Beck. And Beck is into the end zone. Touchdown, Georgia. They just follow that big offensive line to the left side. He's big and he's physical also. Well, and up where you and I live, Tom, they call this the brotherly shove now. It's been popularized <laughs> by the Philadelphia Eagles. Watch 69, Ratledge. He just would not allow Carson Beck to go backwards. Impressive answer drive for Georgia, but let's be honest. They were really fortunate after the fumbled snap by their center, Cedric Van Pran. I mean, yeah, Georgia absolutely. got really lucky. That should have been a stop for Vanderbilt. Peyton Woodring is on for the point after. Trying to tie this game up at seven. He's hitting it into what will eventually be more seats and luxury boxes here at Vanderbilt. And his extra point is good. We're tied up at seven. 542 to play here in the first quarter. Kirby Smart's team. They got lucky here. Ross will love this. So the day <laughs> dies that an offensive lineman was able to rumble and spin. And then the traditional quarterback keeper, 7-7. For Nashville, Tennessee, a lot of Georgia fans. And not a surprise, they came over to see Carson Beck and the Bulldogs. Vanderbilt will get it back. Fair catch is called right at the goal line again. Well, now, do Project Smarter, presented by the Home Depot. Last week, Georgia's defense held Kentucky to 183 total yards of offense. That's the fewest yards allowed by Georgia's defense this season. That total included only 55 yards on the ground. You know, Ray Davis, who was a burner for Kentucky and last year for Vanderbilt, he was definitely held in check. He was coming off of a huge game against the Florida Gators. And you could tell Georgia took it personally that they were not going to allow Davis to run on them. First down for the 25-yard line. Patrick Smith is in the backfield. McGowan in motion. They give it to Smith. And Cheeks is able to pound his way across the 30. A flag is in. And he's up to the 33-yard line. Lee Hedrick is our referee. Holding on the offense. 
number 84. That 10 yard penalty will be a first final foul. Yeah, so Justin Ball is the was called for the infraction. And you can actually hear from Hedrick's microphone how windy it is down on the field right now, Ross. You're right. That was a well blocked play by Vandy up front. You see Glenn Schumann, the defensive coordinator. It's funny, we asked him, you know, how this unit compares to the last couple of years, and he said, all I'll say is we are trying to be elite yeah. at getting better, and if we just keep getting better, by the end of the year, we'll be right where we want to be. I would agree with him on that. And, and last week against Kentucky, that was shining bright. Quick toss to the outside. Pass is complete to Cheryl. Cheryl's got a few blockers, and he's up across the 25. Uh, Javon Bullard makes the tackle. The junior from Milledgeville, Georgia. And Tom, if this is your first time watching Vanderbilt on offense, they've got some legit playmakers at wide receiver. I mean, this is what they look like. They score a bunch of points. Unfortunately for them, they've been giving up too right. many as well. But you've got Shepard, who's one of the best in the conference, and you've got a couple other guys that run 10, 600 meters. I mean, they've got some serious speed. Got a man in motion. Now that's McGowan. Seals throws. Passes complete quickly. And that's Richie Hoskins. And Hoskins has got a first down. He's up close to the 38-yard line. And, and they are spreading it out. Listen, Shepard has only had that one pass thrown to him so far. Well, it's interesting to see Georgia playing a lot of zone coverage here. You'll see Hoskins at the bottom. It's zone coverage, and Hoskins just sits down mm -hmm. right in the middle of that zone. Georgia has very good cover corners. A lot of times they'll play a lot of man-to-man, -man, but against this zone so far, Vanderbilt has been excellent. Data nine yards. It's another first down. Shepard's at the bottom of your screen. He's the best receiver for Vanderbilt. Blake Fox is down under five. And just as the play clock hits one, they hand the ball off, and some daylight to the left. And again, Patrick Smith... Dumas Johnson eventually took him down, but it's a gain of seven yards. And the only way you have a successful run, Tom, is when you win a gap. Watch Bradley Ashmore come and hook the defensive lineman right there. That's low. His gap is the B gap. You see that? As soon as Ashmore got his hips around, mm. Georgia lost the B gap. Yep. Every defender in the front seven is responsible for a gap. Ashmore stole that gap from the Georgia Bulldogs. That's how you get a successful run. And with his chicken legs, he's able to do as much as he can right there. He hands the ball off to Cheek. Seals does. Nothing's doing. Boy, there was a wall that was up there. Dumas Johnson was there. Christian Miller was there as well. It's a loss of one. That's another one where if Seals had the option to pull the ball, he probably would have been better off there. Dumas Johnson just so explosive. Really, both their linebackers starting for the second year have been really impressive when you watch them. The strength of the Georgia defense right now is their off-the-ball linebackers and their safeties. Big third down here for Vandy. Let's see if Georgia brings the pressure. Dumas Johnson is lined up on the bottom of your screen defensive line-wise. He's coming. Number 10's coming. A third down. Pass to the outside. Incomplete. He had Shepard, but the pass was off to his left. Dalen Everett in on the coverage. It'll be fourth down. Missed opportunity there for Vanderbilt. You've got your best receiver against Georgia's second corner. Leverett is not the cover corner that Lassiter is on the other side. That needs to be a completion to stay in this game. Maybe the ball was thrown a little bit inside. There was a little bit of contact there, but they let him play. Muse is back deep to receive, and here is Matthew Hayball. The Australian punter on fourth down. Not much contention. Not a great punt. Again, the wind has been a problem on that side of the field. It'll take a Vanderbilt bounce inside the 25-yard line. So Georgia at Vanderbilt tied at seven with 2.26 to play here in the first quarter. Just a 33-yard punt. He was fortunate he got a, a decent bounce on the turf. Well, and if he has a punt like that, then you know the win's a factor because he's one of the best punters yep. in all of college football. Two twenty-six to play here in the first quarter. Back five of six so far. Tiffany, what's the wind doing down there? Yeah, Tom, it's kind of unpredictable. There are moments where it's still, and then there's just these gusts, and it's kind of just whipping all over the field. Mm. Well, it certainly saw it on the field goal attempt and on that last punt. 
Beck working out of the gun. Edwards in the backfield. Beck has time. Beck zips it. It's complete. McConkey, and that's a huge bright spot for Georgia that he's healthy and running into the open fields. Inside Vanderbilt territory to the 45. Well, listen, watch McConkey top of the formation. Everybody's concerned about Bowers. You see this all the time. Double, double Bowers, double Bowers. It opens up all the underneath stuff for the other Georgia receivers. Gate of 31. You know, he's had that back ailment. They've slowly put him back in. They'd eventually like to put him to return kicks again. But this is a very talented Georgia wide receiver room. Absolutely. First out of the 46-yard line. Little run play action. Edwards to the 44. All right, so Lad McConkey. They've had some transfers, but he's not one of them. And this is a kid who's established himself as a really good receiver. Talked to an NFL scout this week. They said he's a top 100 player. Wow. He's been their leading receiver last year. By the way, I just assumed when he was a freshman a couple years ago, Tom, that he was related to Phil McConkey, right. the former Giants receiver. Not related at all. Hmm. I mean, what are the odds that the only two McConkeys I've ever heard of aren't related, and yet they're both NFL caliber receivers? It's the name. It's the name. Pass is complete to Love It and Love It. Barrels inside the 40. What do you have, Tiffany? Yeah, guys, it's been good for this team to have Lad McConkey back. And in talking with offensive coordinator Mike Bobo about it, he said that McConkey's just one of those guys that Carson Beck can trust. And that really having him back these last two weeks has given Beck so much confidence. It is such a big deal. We see it on every level how confident you are to have a go to guy. Another third down here for Georgia. Very likely four down territory here. So they could throw it. If they have confidence, they can get it on fourth down. On third down, here we go. Back looking to throw. Dancing in the pocket, middle of the field. Pass is complete. McConkey again. And McConkey inside the 25. Langston Patterson made the tackle. Well, this is what Lad McConkey does. And he is a third down machine. He sees the zone coverage. He sits down in the middle of it. Wherever there's open green space, that's where you'll find Lad McConkey. Yeah, it's a gain of 13 yards. This is also an indication on how Beck has established these relationships with these wide receivers. Clock is winding down. That'll be the end of the first quarter. 7-7. Vanderbilt struck first. Georgia was able to answer. And now Georgia is moving the football as we get set for the second quarter. Score as we get set to begin the second quarter. Moments ago, Tiffany Blackman uh, caught up with Clark Lee. Coach Lee, Georgia's trying to find a way back in this game, but you all started with a touchdown and a strip sack fumble. How do you regain momentum? Well, we just got to keep playing. I mean, there's obviously a lot of football left, so I would love to have seen us take advantage of the short field, but um, we'll have more opportunities as we go. We just got to we gotta be in the moment and uh, play snap to snap. That's going to be the formula for us to, to keep this thing tight and have a chance to win it late. Thanks, Coach. Thank you. Yeah, so far, there's a lot of evenness to this game. Time of possession is even, but and the score is even, but now Georgia into the red zone. Right, and, and Clark Lee talked about these red zone opportunities. He said one side or the other is going to score, mm. right? And if the defense holds them to a field goal, they look at that as a four-point score for the defense. Here's Bowers who gets the handoff, and Bowers inside the five-yard line is down close to the three. Yeah, he said he got it from the baseball team. He said it's RBI defense. It's saving runs in baseball, but saving points in football. They knew that they would get to the situation where Georgia would get in the red zone, and they need to use the condensed field to their advantage, right? But Georgia's already here on the three-yard line. Mm. It's so interesting, isn't it, Tom, on some of these third and shorts to see Georgia throw the ball? You know, growing up, you get so used to all the great running backs they've had, Gurley and Chubb, but they like to throw it. Second down and goal, and they'll hand it off to Milton, and Milton powers his way into the end zone. Touchdown, Georgia. That's his third touchdown run of the year. And it's 13-7 Bulldogs. And that, Tom, is old school Georgia football. It's just inside zone, run behind your pads, man on a man, you meet the safety at the one yard line, you power through, you carry the linebacker into the end zone. 
That's the Bulldog football we're used to over the years. Yeah, so now they have 23 touchdowns in the red zone this year. They're 31 of 34 in points scored in red zone trips. And the point after is good. This is what Robert Cullen of America. Well, Milton, again, these guys are getting healthy. And his help, Edwards' help, is going to help Georgia continue to move forward. Indiana receivers room. Donovan McCulley, bottom of your screen, used to be a quarterback. From the short hop to Jalen Lucas, his new offensive coordinator, Rod Carey, dials it up at the big house. They're up 7 0 on Michigan. Haven't won there since 1967, T Mac. You know, Adam, it's cold. It's raining there a little bit. So that could be part of the anatomy of an upset. Here's McGowan, who's going to try to bring it out. He sheds a few blockers, a beautiful stiff arm, and he gets up to the 20-yard line. Let's check in with Tiffany. Thanks, Tom. It's time for the Reliable Connection presented by T-Mobile 5G Home Internet. Kirby Smart and Clark Lee are among the 10 current FBS head coaches who coach at their alma mater. Kirby Smart, a Georgia defensive back from 1995 to 98, and Clark Lee, a Vanderbilt fullback from 2002 to 2004, guys. And I think it adds so much, to Ben Ross, to, to being back at your alma mater, yeah. understanding what you want the culture to be. Well, and obviously the SEC uh, phrase, it just means more. It definitely means Absolutely. more when you're at your alma mater. There's no question. Humphreys goes in motion to the outside. Seals on first down. He's in trouble, and he is going down. Smile Munden was there to get the sack, but he certainly had some help. And that's a real bad sign for Vanderbilt there because Seal started looking down at the rush. I mean, there was pressure from both sides, but watch him. He put his eyes down right here. Eyes down. Starts Whoop. looking at the defenders. You got to get rid of it. He's a veteran player. You can't take that sack in that situation. Yeah, Christian Miller was 52 who got him initially to slow him up, and he is the injured player down you know, it's been missed opportunities, right? Vanderbilt got off to a great start. He throws it to Shepard, almost makes the catch, might have been past interference. Then they missed the field goal short with a chance to go up by two scores. And then even the drive after that, they had a third down. And Shepard was open, and he and Seals just couldn't connect. I don't really think, Tom, Vanderbilt needs to change anything. They've got a good game plan. They've been moving the football, but Seals cannot afford to take sacks like the one he just took and put them behind the chains like this. You know, he has talked about trying to improve his uh, own personal abilities, not make certain mistakes. There's a quick toss to Cheryl. And Cheryl has taken down up close to the 17-yard line. And this is the type of play where mistakes happen, right? Third and very long. You're backed up inside your own 20. Seals need to be very, very careful in this situation. Yeah, he's talked about some of the mistakes he's made this year, how he looks back and says, I can't make those anymore. No, absolutely not. We'll see if Georgia comes with pressure again, but Seals careful with the ball. Well, flag comes in. We'll false start now. And this is part of it, too. You can't have this. Gunnar Hansen may not have allowed a sack this year, but he does get the penalty there. So now that changes the formula, right? Third and 13, they're probably not even going to really try for the first down here. Third and 18, now you're thinking screen, you're thinking draw. I mean, the, the coordinators don't even really have plays for third and 18. Yeah. You want to do something safe here. They're 39% on the year, seventh in the SEC. They're just going to hand the ball off and just get some breathing room. And not much is there for Cedric Alexander. And I know fans don't like that, Tom, but you try to drive the ball down the field 20 yards or more on third and 18, there's a greater likelihood that Georgia picks that pass off than that you get the first down. I agree with that decision for Vanderbilt. It's still a one-score game here in the second quarter. They're hanging tough. Don't allow Georgia to get a short field. Well, Hayball will punt the ball away. Georgia has forced 43 punts this year for the opposition. That's tops in college football. Hayball, here comes the pressure. He gets that one off. Hughes is coming up, and he fumbled it. He fell on top of it, though. Oh, that could have been disastrous for the Bulldogs. That is the second time a Georgia Bulldog, really third time, a Georgia Bulldog has put the ball 
on the turf. Vanderbilt's only gotten one of them. Muse able to save the day for the Bulls. Today's Aflac trivia question. Which tight ends have won the Heisman Trophy? Now, we bring that up because Bowers, I think, in my mind, in your mind, should be considered for the Heisman Trophy this year. Well, there's no question. I mean, if Devontae Smith won it a couple years ago, I certainly think Bowers should be at least in the conversation. Yeah, we mentioned during the outset, three straight 100-yard games. Now he's three for 16 so far today. Well, and a lot of that's been because he clears out the coverage. Absolutely. Tom, for the other receivers. He's almost a decoy on a lot of these plays. Speaking of other receivers, that was Love it in motion. Beck's looking long. Beck's got a man, and it's incomplete. Arian Smith had it, and it went right through his hands. Barry, he comes up with his hands out away from his body, but he didn't really do a whole lot except for get beat on that. No, that's a drop by Arian Smith. He's had that issue at times this year. He's got track speed. Watch it just go right through his hands. And that's been the issue with Arian Smith. He's electric with the ball in his hands, and obviously they weren't able to cover him. And Bobo knows he's a great guy to do a deep shot to, and you can see Bobo's uh, frustrated because yep. you don't get many opportunities like that. Yeah, and he said, we're working on it with him. We're working on it every day in practice with him. They hand the ball off. It's Milton, and Milton with some misdirection is free toward midfields. Mahoney missed the tackle, and that's on Milton's foot speed. And then Barr's able to bring him down again to 17. And left side of your screen, he got a terrific block from Ladd McConkey right there. Ladd McConkey's the reason why he got off the edge and then hit the juke button there <laughs> on Mahoney, and then he ran through a tackle. Milton showed it all on that run. Don't you wish as an offensive lineman you could have hit the juke button? We don't have juke buttons <laughs> on the offensive line, unfortunately. First down Although Cedric Pran hit the, uh, the spin move. Yeah, he did. <laughs> on first down for midfield, Milton again. And Milton down to the 47-yard line, a gain of three. How much do you think Georgia is going to try to run the ball more today? Well, it looks like on this drive, they're starting to do that. When you're playing against a defense like Vanderbilt, Tom, that's playing really soft, right? They've got both safeties deep. They're trying not to give up any explosive plays. That means Vanderbilt doesn't have the extra defender of the box a lot. So there's some favorable looks for Georgia to run the ball, but... You know, they've had more success this year throwing the rock. Second down and seven. Beck's looking to throw. He brings the pocket out with him, throws. He's got McConkie. And McConkie bounces down past the first down marker to the 39. And Mahoney there to make the tackle. That's just well done, though, right? You have back-to-back -back runs. So then you fake the run and you boot out opposite. Because the defense is all thinking, okay, they're running it, they're running it. Bowers was well covered. Vanderbilt is well aware of number 19. So Beck as he does so often, processes it very well and goes to his second option. Speaking of second option, Oscar Delp is in the game, number four. He is next to Bowers on the offensive line to your left side. They hand the ball to Edwards. Edwards presses the juke button and goes down to the 37-yard line. Gain of two. Kane Patterson makes the tackle. The two Patterson brothers. Lee was there, too. Now there's Oscar Delp, the sophomore. They have a lot of plays with 12 personnel. That's one running back, two tight ends, because Bowers is so versatile, moving him all around the formation. Delp, sort of more your traditional tight end. Yeah, he's in the backfield right now, Bowers is. They're not afraid to give him the ball on a carry. Now he's in motion on second down. They throw it to him out of the backfield. He's got two blockers on the outside, and he just lowers his shoulder and dives forward to the 31. Boy, he goes 100 miles an hour all the time. Well, he played running back at times. Wide receiver, you'll see him motion out of the backfield. And I'm a little surprised Vanderbilt didn't get more guys there sooner. I mean, C.J. Taylor is being double teamed with the point of attack. You see Bowers going motion like that you got to know that's the guy georgia loves to get the ball to georgia three or four on third downs facing a third and two again this could be four down territory wouldn't be surprised if they run it here but they could take a shot if they have confidence that they can get the first down on fourth down yeah, Beck just pointed out the mike linebacker they give it to edwards and he's got the first down and he's down inside the uh, 25 ethan Barr makes the tackle tiff i know you talked to uh, bowers this week pretty interesting kid 
this, Tom, and you talking about him going 100 miles an hour. He said he's been that way since he was a kid. His mom told him a story about him losing the soccer ball when he was seven or eight in a game. He kept running. He would not stop and worked himself into a breathing fit, guys. <laughs> well, I'm glad he's worked himself out of that. <laughs> First down for the 25. Here it comes. A little bit. They hand it off to Bowers. Edwards got it to Bowers. Bowers got a block from Beck. And a flag comes in, and Bowers is inside the 15-yard line, and he's slow to get up. Bowers a little slow to get up. That obviously would not be good. And Beck, you called it a block. Well, he was in his way. I, that's <laughs> that's <laughs> all he did. Number 15, 10-yard penalty from the spot of the foul. Tom, I've been waiting my whole life. Oh, that's oh, no. not good. No, no. Oh, man, that is not good. Bowers goes down. Oh, look at that. He just punched the turf because he knows. So the athletic training staff is coming out to take a look at Brock Bowers. We'll step aside and be back. The day here in college football. Let's take a look at this last play, the hold and then the injury. I don't know if I've ever seen a hold on a quarterback. Look at Beck. He's holding on to his undershirt. <laughs> I don't know, if Beck. That's not really a hold. That was self-preservation, I think. <laughs> from Carson Beck. I don't know he's ever been knocked backwards like that trying to block someone. You see Bowers get rolled up on a little bit at the end of that play. Yeah, so he's going into the tent. He did walk off just like you just saw there, but there was certainly a gate. All right, so first down to the 31-yard line. I mean, Beck got drilled, and he got the holding penalty. Love it. In motion. Lines up in the slot. Beck to the middle has Love it. And Lovett lowers his shoulder, and he's taken down by Barr, who makes that tackle. Let's check in with Tiffany. Hey, guys, I did watch Brock Bowers, as you said, Tom, go into the tent. He was walking off on his own, but still limping. He got some high fives from teammates, but he did look frustrated. I should also know he did leave last week's game. He got banged up a little bit for a few series, but he was able to come back in. I'm working on getting y'all an update soon. All right, Tiffany, thank you. Yeah, and he said last week, he said, I was fine. He said, it's just one of those things. And again, he does go 100 miles an hour. But it was a little different when he pounded the turf. Yes, the way he that's did time. what I thought. And it's interesting to note Georgia has their bye next week. Second down and long. Love it again. Love it can do this. He did it at Missouri. But that's C.J. Taylor, who we haven't called much today. But he is a pro prospect at that anchor position. I absolutely love watching C.J. Taylor to take on that button. Now, Vanderbilt is trying to substitute. they got to call timeout. Yeah, whistle blows and a timeout call. Clark Lee was out on the field. Prior to the snap, timeout, Vanderbilt. It'll be third down. Charge timeout timeout for Vanderbilt. It's their first of the half. We'll be back. For the tent, and then he was uh, helped off the field, heading into the locker room. Uh, not a great sign. And you look here, most career receiving yards in Georgia school history. He's going to shatter so many records. But now... Kirby Smart. Well, Vandy was almost going to get caught with 12 guys on the field. They were trying to substitute. Right. And Georgia did a nice job. That's, that was smart by Kirby Smart. Third and eight here for Georgia. Here comes Ladd McConkie. He's usually the third down moneymaker in the left. Play clock is down to one. Here comes the blitz. Pass underneath to McConkie. And McConkie is trying to fight his way to the first down, but he stopped at the 17. Again, C.J. Taylor comes up with his fist up, saying fourth down. That's the kind of job he can do. Isn't it amazing how often they go to McConkie on third down like yes. that? Now, fourth down, Georgia not showing any inclination to kick the field goal here. I'm a little bit surprised by that. Obviously, they're an aggressive team. They like their offensive line. They feel like they can get these two yards. But with a contested game like this, I would have kicked the field goal here. I would go up two scores to yeah. make sure you're up two scores. Well, they're three of four on fourth down this year. Kirby Smart's going down to the official. I wonder if he's going to ask for a timeout. No, he's just looking. They're going to hand the ball off to Milton, and Milton diving toward the 15. He's close. I think he's got it, but it depends on the spot. Wow. That is really close. That is a gutsy call for Georgia. Just run inside zone on fourth and two. It's going to come down to the measurement, Tom. I think they stopped him, yeah. They stopped him. Wow, how about that spot? What a job by the Commodores. You can see the yellow line there. Nice job by Lee to hit him in the backfield. 
Melton goes forward. Tough to see from that angle when his knee was down. Obviously, he ended up past the line the game. It looked like it. Yeah, you're right. But obviously, this is one they'll probably take a look at, Tom. It's a significant play, and it's very, very close. Xavier Truss is the injured offensive lineman who's down on the ground for Georgia. He's wearing number 77. He usually wears 73. There's Truss. He's wearing 77 in honor of uh, Devin Willock, the former Georgia player who died last year. Boy, that was awfully close. Look at it again. So the replay officials, they're looking at every angle here. See, he's down. He's not down yet. Right there. I, I didn't see either knee come down. I think the first thing that went down might have been that elbow. Yeah, and, and the towel went down also. That was it. So the ball, elbow. the ball is on the line. They spotted it behind Inside. the line. Yep. I think he got the line. I think he got a bad spot based on what we're seeing here. Gene, what do you see? I agree with Ross. Let's hear. Yeah, the here's a. on the field is that the runner was short of the line of gain. That play is under video review. So they weren't looking at it there with Trust being down. Go ahead, Gene. Uh, you can go ahead again. Yeah, yeah Tommy, I, I, I'm agreeing with Ross on the play. I believe the left elbow is the first body part down. And to me, it appears like the nose of the football is a little beyond that line, that hard line, when the left elbow hits. I was looking for the legs as well. Looks like the knees stay up, as we see there. And then you see the left elbow hit. And to me now, a little bit of that nose of the football definitely reaches the white. Now, whether it's a little beyond, we are going to get into inches here, guys. Yes, so. that's exactly it. All right, so, Gene, at this point, based on the replay, they'll re-spot the ball if you and I are correct and then potentially measure it at that point, right? Exactly, Ross. That's that's exactly where they'll go with it, which I'll be honest with you from past experience is a little uneasy feeling for a referee to leave an <laughs> iPad or a, uh, a review and then walk out to the middle of the field and put the ball exactly where it's supposed to be. I was just going to say, Gene, it can't be easy to spot a ball off of a monitor, right? <laughs> no, it's not. It's not. And uh, but you will work back to being as specific as you possibly can, because as we've said multiple times here, right, an inch or two one way or the other can be the determining factor. So you really want to dial in and get this thing as close to perfect as you can. Well, and because of that, Lee Hedrick uh, is looking at that uh, at the replay along with everybody else. And he's taken a long time to look at it, too. And that is a tremendous effort by Milton. Absolutely. Milton's having a terrific game for Georgia. But to be able to, I mean, he's got guys on him. And to be able to, like, levitate like that and not have his legs touch the ground. I think the officials thought one of his knees hit the ground, yeah. which is why they spotted it behind the line of the game. All right, so here's Lee Hedrick. After review, video evidence shows that the runner was not down and the line of the game was met. It will be first and 10 for Georgia at the 15-yard line. Well, we appreciate Gene uh, being part of the conversation. That's an excellent job there, but based on the replay that we saw. Well, and that's huge in this game, obviously, right? I mean, that's one of the biggest plays of the game so far. Well, Gino, that was a good explanation. Thank you for your help on that. You got it, guys. You got it. Kendall Milton was on the sidelines for Georgia. It looks like they're looking at him right now. And that means Edwards will be in the backfield. Guys are dropping like flies it's for the Georgia Bulldogs right now. All right, so first down from the 15-yard line. Man-to-man -man coverage at the top if they want it. Head back, hands it off to Edwards. Edwards is wrapped up, taken down. Agu, he came in and sealed that area. It's a gain of one. Langston Patterson there, too. Patterson getting a chance to play with his brother, Kane Patterson, the Clemson transfer who's banged up right now. How cool is that, by the way? Play I mean, with your, your brother. brothers, yeah. and you get to play college football together in the SEC. Such a cool experience that they'll remember forever. This will be the 14th play of the drive. And they'll hand the ball off to Dylan Bell out of the backfield, and Bell... Taylor makes the initial hit, and then Ethan Barr, excuse me, Langston Patterson there to clean it up. C.J. Taylor told us yesterday 
that this is an NFL game for him. Yep. This is a showcase game for the league. He was excited to match up at times with Brock Bowers, and he just made another outstanding timeout. play. Vanderbilt. And Vanderbilt calls this another timeout. That's their second charge timeout. timeout. This is a huge third down and seven right now for Vanderbilt. You see uh, C.J. Taylor talking now. So he comes over to the sidelines and starts to talk to the coaching staff. So second timeout used by Vanderbilt. They're down to one. New CBS Wednesday Survivor is back with a new tribe in a 90 minute episode all season long. It's the biggest season of Survivor ever. New Wednesday on CBS and streaming on Paramount Plus. And by the way, Tom, it's too early for Vanderbilt, I think, to be calling a timeout in order to get more time when they get the ball back. That, that was a timeout by Clark Lee to make sure his defense is set here for third and seven. Because it changes a little bit of the dynamic, right? Brock Bowers isn't out there. Right. So now who are you focusing on? Now who do you double? Lad McConkey's not out there either. So both of the money makers for Georgia are not out there on third down. And on third down, Beck looking toward the end zone. Pressure's coming. He throws incomplete. There was pressure. He intended it for Lovett. Clifton was in his face. We talked to him yesterday. He is a big kid and an athletic kid. And there you go for Vanderbilt right there. They look at that as scoring four points. This is the Vanderbilt defense scoring four points the way they teach it. They drop the Cosmo, the defensive end, back in there. And Beck had a tough throw to get it over him. But they look at that as a four-point play right there, preventing the Bulldogs from getting a touchdown. Peyton Woodring is on for the field goal attempt. It'll be a 31-yard attempt. Beck is the holder. Good snap, and the kick is on its way. It's good. And Georgia extends its lead. It's 17-7 with 3.40 to play here in the first half. I wish for the amazing new iPhone 15 Pro. Sean. Do you mean this one, the one with titanium? No way I could trade this busted up thing for one. Maybe stealing wishes from the birthday boy is not your best plan. Switch to Verizon and trade in any iPhone and get the new iPhone 15 Pro on them. What? Yep, and on an amazing network. And I don't have to ruin any more birthday parties. Yeah, that ship has sailed. Let's go get you that iPhone. Here we one go. Second. Come on now. It's your last chance to trade in any iPhone for a new iPhone 15 Pro on us. Only on Verizon. What is America's role in the war in Israel? To those holding American hostages, you say what? President Biden speaks to 60 Minutes Sunday. Well, Bowers is back out of the locker room, but he's heading somewhere else. We'll try to get an update. You can see he's limping as he's being helped uh, along the back of the end zone. And I don't care if you're a Georgia fan or a Vanderbilt fan. If you love college football, you love the way Brock Bowers plays this sport. No doubt. McGowan calls for the fair catch inside the five-yard line. All right, let's uh, continue to test your knowledge. We gave you the question before, which tight ends have won the Heisman Trophy? Oh, here we go. Larry Kelly in 36 and Leon Hart of Notre Dame in 49. Did you know both of them? I did because I was looking it up this week about Brock Bowers. It's been a while, though, Tom. It has. It's been a little bit of time. Leon Hart uh, won three national championships and three NFL titles. Now that is a career. That's back when, by the way, they weren't called tight ends. They were just called ends. Ends. All right, Vanderbilt will take over after a 16-play drive. The most, uh, most plays that Georgia has had on a drive this year resulted in a 31-yard field goal. That's McGowan in motion. They hand the ball off. And Patrick Smith just gets a couple of yards. Dumas Johnson is there to make the tackle. Marvin Jones there as well. Gain of uh, close to three. What are you thinking for Vanderbilt here? I mean, can you take a chance or you have to play it conservatively here? No, I mean, listen, you're, you're down by 10. You're not just trying to keep it close. You're trying to win the game. And they've had some success throwing the football. I think you go back to what was working earlier. They've got Shepard at the top and a bunch set to the left here with their speedster receivers. And it's McGowan, one of the receivers in motion. Oh, he's in trouble. And it's nearly Ooh. intercepted by Dumas Johnson. Wow. Warren Brinson was right in the face of Seals when he let that one go. Dumas, watch. They fake the run 
and Brinson doesn't buy it at all. Seals got away with one right there because Dumas Johnson had visions of a pick six. All right, so now third down. Third and eight, and they've got to the top of the screen both Humphreys and Shepard. They have not converted a third down today. One of ten last week. Trips to the right. He's going to look for one of those guys. Play clock down to one. Pressure's coming. Seals dumps it off. He's got McGowan. He's got a first down. And he outruns the defender up to the 44-yard line. Dumas Johnson. That is a huge play to get breathing room. And Vandy has plenty of time here. You'll see an in route, and then he comes back out. Dumas Johnson had to stop because it looked like McGowan was coming towards him. Just look at the, he's got his right hand up on the name plate, and then he lets go of it. It's a good thing Dumas Johnson didn't pull him down by the back of the nameplate there because the nameplate and above into the collar, that's a horse collar. That's actually a heads-up play by Dumas Johnson to release that right hand and not tack on another 15 yards. All right, so first down to the 45-yard line. McGowan's in the backfield. He'll take the handoff running to his left. There's not a lot of room, and he is met and knocked down. Tyke Smith makes the tackle for Georgia. Well, it just kept getting strung out, strung yeah. out, strung out, and Tyke Smith, number 23, gets off the block. He plays that star position for Georgia. He's a Philly kid, actually called a couple of his state championship games very, very physical at that position. Transfer from West Virginia. Interesting to me that Kirby Smart did not use one of his timeouts there. I think he wants to make sure they're going to get a stop before he starts to use timeouts to get the ball back on the other side. They didn't have to play. Seals pulls it down. Pass to McGowan. Nothing there. Tyke Smith again makes the tackle. The Kirby Smart should call timeout here. I I'm surprised he's not calling timeout there. You would think that he would have the confidence in his defense on third and eight to call timeout and have more time on the other side, but... He has seen what Vanderbilt has done throwing the football in this game. And he wants to make sure his guys get a stop before he uses those timeouts. Yeah, Seals 11 of 14, 122 yards. He's gotten away with a couple. Skinner is at the top of your screen for Vanderbilt. They've converted one third down so far. Going to look to the bottom here. He does peek to the bottom. Now to the middle, and it's intercepted. Tyke Smith is having himself a series. It was intended for Quincy Skinner and Tyke Smith. A couple big tackles, and now the interception. Are you kidding me with those three plays in a row from Tyke Smith? He plays the star position, and watch. He's going to go with Skinner. He goes an in-breaking route. He is stride for stride, head around for the ball, catches it, and makes a huge play. That's his fourth interception. And we're talking about a guy that just made the tackle the previous two plays. Look at that shoulder pads. He was a savage on that drive for sure. So Georgia will take over. That'll be first down for the 45. And the flip side is now they do have all three of their timeouts. That's true. By the way, they have not recovered a fumble this year. But it's their ninth interception of the season. Now Beck trying to capitalize. Middle of the field. He's got Delp. And he's got a first down on his first catch. Coming up on the Geico Halftime Report, Adam, Rick, and BJ break down our first half and bring you highlights of today's early games. Beck to throw again on first down. Beck, this one. Love it's got it. Wow, he was able to change his body and make the catch inside the 10. Mahoney got a little too close in a timeout call. Yeah, Georgia needs to call a timeout there, and they do. Even though the clock still stops in the last two minutes, when you get a first down in timeout. college football, they have three. You can't take them with you. And that'd be a long way for the linemen to run, and they might lose some time there. That's a 30-yard pass play. We mentioned Lovett, the transfer from Missouri. Outstanding last year against Missouri. Wrapped up uh, the Thanksgiving game with over 100 yards against Arkansas. Big time transfer. Well, and this is a big swing couple plays here because Vandy had the ball near midfield and Seals throws that interception. Next thing you know, George is at the five-yard line. Right. 
This was the first throw all kinds of time to throw it to Delp. That would typically be a Bowers route. And again, he just has too much time, Tom. I mean, Carson Beck is too good. If he has that much time, he's going to be able to find guys. And on the play after that, he was able to find Lovett with a back shoulder throw. So if you're Georgia now, you really have plenty of time. And because they have those two timeouts, you can run they it. could run it. Yeah. They, they could run it on one of these two downs. Tyke Smith made big play after big play after big play. Three in a row. Edwards in the backfield on first and goal. Delp in motion. They shovel it to Edwards. Edwards tries to stiff arm his way. Nothing doing. Langston Patterson was there to make the tackle. It'll be second and goal. Watch Langston Patterson from the left side of your screen. He sees the toss, runs underneath it. He can run. Excellent tackle by Patterson. Kirby Smart does the right thing there, calling the timeout. But this is a big opportunity for Vanderbilt to get another four-point play if they can somehow stop Georgia from getting in the end zone. Yeah, so 17-7, George is on top by 10, 14 seconds left, and each team now with one timeout left. So Georgia can still run it again, Tom, but if you run it again, then you use your timeout, and so then on third down, then you kind of have to throw it, right? Where this would be a good down where they can do either and not be in a situation where Vandy knows what's coming. In other words, if Georgia runs it here and Vandy stops him, well, then Vandy knows on third down it's pass. Well, Seals' interception is what has led to the second and goal from the four for Georgia. And even that interception, it, it, it was third down. So the clock would have kept running if it wasn't the, the change of possession. All right, so second and goal inside the five-yard line. And McConkie's back in the game at the bottom of the screen. He always finds the open space. He's right next to Delp. They're going to throw the left side. Caught. Touchdown. Love it. He's had himself a good series. And George is on top 23-7. to seven. It's a four-yard toss from Beck. Really good design. Top of your screen. Love it. Looks like he's coming in motion. Goes right back out. That is so tough. You know, I watched that, and I thought maybe he, that stumble was going to cost him, but it didn't. He was so free. Well, it's so hard for Barry. You know, Barry's in man-to-man -man coverage, so he's trying to run with him. He thought Levitt was going all the way across the formation the other way. When Lovett stops like that and goes back out, that is tough duty. Well, Woodring's on for the point after. This is a backbreaker if you're Vanderbilt. The point after is good. It goes right through the scissor lifts and into the construction zone. And it's 24-7. George is on top. Here's the interception. Tyke Smith. That set it up for this. Lovett, the transfer from Missouri. Having him see him come in motion. You think you got to run the other side? I mean, this is tough. Oh, he's going the other way. Whoop. That is tough. Yeah, so nine turnovers this year that Georgia's forced. They've scored six touchdowns on those turnovers. Well, because as a corner like Barry, when you see Lovett start to go in motion like that, Tom, you're so worried about being late to cover him on the other side. Lovett had two big plays for the Bulldogs on that drive. So 24-7, it's an amazing swing for us to think about it in just less than two minutes. Vandy was driving with a chance to yes. make it a one-score game again. And instead, the interception and the big throw to love it, Georgia comes right back. I would expect Vandy to just take a knee here and go into halftime, although Georgia gets the ball to start the second half. Well, there it is. He is just going to take a knee. Seals is. So that'll wind the final seconds off the clock. It's Georgia 24 and Vanderbilt 7. Beck is 17 of 20 for 181 yards and one touchdown so far this afternoon. They say that he uh, is a good processor. Well, he's a little bit more than that. And Georgia will receive the second half kickoff when we come back for the third quarter. 24-7. Georgia's taken the lead over Vanderbilt. Really impressive uh, last two minutes for Georgia being able to convert that, that turnover. Let's check in with Tiffany. Coach Smart, I know you still need to get an update on Brock Bowers, but we watched you go out on the field when he initially went down. Were you able to say anything to him? 
Oh, yeah, he was good. He was in good spirits. He's got a, a little bit of an ankle sprain on the bottom part of his foot, but he thinks he'll be fine. They're going to go x-ray and check it out. It's an uncharacteristic play for you all to start this game early, but then you get the Smith interception and then the touchdown. How do you build off of this? Try to do it again in the second half. <laughs> Thanks, Coach. Thank you. Go, Doug. All right, Tiffany, thank you. We appreciate that. 24-7 Georgia is on top of Vanderbilt. That's the end of the first half of the score. Georgia on top will send it to Adam Zucker in our New York studio for the Geico halftime report. All right, team. Get set for the uh, third quarter to get underway down here at Vanderbilt. It's 24-7. Georgia is on top along with Ross Tucker and Tiffany Blackman, Gene Steratore, and Tom McCarthy. All right, so what are you thinking after the first half? Well, it's just wild how thin the margins are in college football, right? I mean, it feels mm. like Vanderbilt's been right there, but certain plays, the missed field goal, the Van Pran fumble that he picked up, yeah. the fourth and two, the Smith interception, just crazy. All right, so our four first half game trends. Walk us through this. Brock Bowers getting injured in the second quarter is certainly one of the most notable things of the game so far. Carson Beck playing very well, continuing what he did last week against Kentucky. And Kent Seals actually playing very well with the exception of that interception at the end of the first half. And yeah, we mentioned this before, that Georgia will get the football to begin the third quarter. So Muse and Bell are back deep to receive. I feel like this series could be one of the series of the game right now for Vanderbilt. Down 24-7. We're underway the third quarter. And Muse will try to return this one for Georgia. He's got some blockers. And he's taken down up to the 27-yard line. And a flag comes in late. C.J. Taylor on special teams makes the tackle for the Commodores. Didn't have many penalties in the first half, so we get one right on the kickoff. Lee Hedrick is the referee for today's ball game. He's uh, first looking at the real estate to see where the ball needs to be. After the play was over, personal foul, late hit on Georgia, number five. That penalty will be enforced half the distance from the goal from the end of the run. First down. All right, 24-7 the score. Let's check in with Tiffany. Hey, guys, I spoke with Vanderbilt coach Clark Lee about not capitalizing on some of their opportunities, and he told me at halftime not a word was said about the first 30 minutes of this game. Instead, they have chosen just to focus on the positive and build off of that. Injury updates for Georgia. Brock Bowers is out with a left ankle injury, and Xavier Truss, their right tackle, is out with a right ankle injury. Now, not being given clarity on if it's out for the rest of this game <laughs> or out just for now, but both of those guys, you may not see them come back if this score still stays the same. All right, Tiffany, thank you very much. That is a tough one for Georgia. Here's Dylan Bell out of the backfield. He stumbles down at the line of scrimmage. C.J. Taylor was in on the tackle. Let's take a look at the first half possessions for Georgia. You know, they fumble, then they scored on the next four possessions, Ross. Well, and what's crazy about it, we were just talking about it, the, the first touchdown drive, that's when they had the third and short, and they had a bad snap. But the center, Van Pran, picked it up and ran for the first down. And even that field goal they got, remember they got stopped on fourth and two, but the replay review overturned it. Loss on that first down play. The pass is complete to the outside. Ra Ra Thomas makes the, makes the catch, and he's close to a first down. Ra Ra Thomas working against Gumbo Gaskins, number 34, another young corner for Vanderbilt. Really getting his first playing time. Played both ways when he was in high school. But because of all the injuries that Vandy has had at corner, he's getting the opportunity tonight. His dad actually nicknamed him Gumbo because he could do a little bit of everything. I love. I thought it had something to do with food. It had to do with everything he well, could do that, on a football field. That's where your interest was peaked. <laughs> <laughs> Rosaby Jackson was in motion. Beck moves the pocket. Try to find a receiver to get open. He'll take it himself, and he slides across the 30. They'll mark it at the 28. All right, so how much does things change for Georgia without Brock Bowers? Well, I think significantly because they build the offense around him. I mean, you talk to Mike Bobo, and even talking with defensive coaches around the country and at Vanderbilt, it seems like, Tom, most of the Georgia pass plays, it's either designed to get the ball to Bowers or he's clearing out and trying to open up space for the other receivers. I mean, he is that foundational to what they do. I'm curious to see how they build it around it without him out here. Well, they go to Muse and a block by Delp, and he is spun across the 30-yard line. 
Savion Riley makes the tackle for Vanderbilt. So how much will Delp be utilized more here? Well, obviously, they do a lot of what they call 12 personnel, two tight ends. When Delp and Bowers are both healthy, now with Bowers out, you're seeing a lot more three receiver sets. Gigantic opportunity here. They've had some success running on third and short. That's Muse that comes into the slot. Four-man front for Vanderbilt on third down. Beck trying to get rid of it quickly. He does. He's got a first down. And Rosemary Jack Sate makes the first down catch and run. Ethan Barr makes the tackle. It's really tough for Vanderbilt, right? They, they want to play a lot of zone coverage to not give up explosive plays, but then third and two, it's just wide open right there, right? I mean, he knows exactly where to sit in against that defense. Edwards will run it, and he'll get toward the 49-yard line, excuse me, the 44-yard line. The Cosmo makes the tackle for Vanderbilt. Interesting to see here. Georgia's taking more time getting these snaps off time. You know, here they are in the second half. They're up by 17. So a lot of times they're moving at hyper speed in the first half. Near, now in the second half, they're still not huddling, but they're not playing with nearly the same amount of tempo as they were. Is that a, a change that's designed, you think? Or it's I think so. I, I think they want to try to shorten the game. They're up by 17. On second down off the play fake. Beck has plenty of time. He throws it to his left. McConkey tried to adjust. He couldn't. Ethan Barr was in on the coverage. And it'll be third down. That was awesome coverage by Ethan Barr. I mean, he is not known for his coverage. They try to do a back shoulder throw, and you won't see that very often. Ladd McConkey dropping a pass. Another third down opportunity for Vanderbilt. I'd like to see them bring some pressure here. George is 5 of 8 on third downs. If they just continue to sit in this zone, Beck is going to find somebody, probably McConkie at the top. I, I'd like to see him bring some pressure. Well, it looks like they're trying to bring some pressure. Beck is in trouble. He steps away from it. He's going to keep it himself. He has a blocker and a first down. C.J. Taylor came up and made the tackle, but it was too late. And that was excellent recognition on Beck because he felt the pressure from the outside. You know, he's not Stetson Bennett as an athlete, Tom, but he's good enough. I mean, that's the second run already on this series, but he's good enough. If he sees a hole, look, he's pointing. Go get me a block somewhere. And Dijon Edwards kind of threw a chicken wing in there a little bit, <laughs> but Beck able to get him a first down with his legs. Not all first downs are created equal. Anytime your quarterback gets one, that feels like a bonus first down. Under 11 minutes to play, Muse, his second reception of this drive, and Muse is spun to the 40-yard line. Riley makes the tackle for Vanderbilt. Well, that may be the, the sign right there. Muse is getting some more opportunities. Watch the blockers come into the frame. All three guys. There's Van Pran. There's Green. Van Pran actually missed his block. Taylor was showing blitz. He comes up. He slots it in the air, and he dives for it. I think he may have gotten it. They're going to say incomplete, but what a play by C.J. Taylor. The ruling on the field is an incomplete pass as the ball hit the ground. Third down. I don't know. That is a tough one. I thought he cupped that Keep left hand. Keep watching. I think he got it. Yeah, I do too. His hands were underneath the ball. That is an unbelievable play by C.J. Taylor. They need to take another look at this. You know, there's movement on it. Obviously, I didn't see it hit the ground. His white gloves were underneath the ball. I would agree with that. Gene Steratore, what do you think, buddy? I think if any part of that football, that's what they're going to look at, guys. Well, I agree that hands are underneath. Pass that plays under video review. But if any part of that football touches the ground because it dislodges from his hands after it does, after hands and ball potentially do make contact, you would have an incomplete pass. So it's not stuck after this contact as we see there. Mm. What they have to look at now is, is there any piece of this football between Woo. fingers? Anything that touches the ball, it's going to be incomplete. Really close play, and I'm sure they'll take multiple angles at it. Gene, it's interesting because this angle right here, it looks like his white gloves are underneath it the whole time but the other angle we saw I'm pretty confident that the ball did touch the ground at this point I, this angle right here Gene if what you're saying is correct and I know it is when the ball hits the ground here it moves a little bit right here you'll see some of the brown Oof. hit the ground That's close. and based on what Gene said I, I would think the call in the field would stand Gene how about you 100% Ross and a really great job and how about the effort of just laying out Incredible. and attempting to make an unbelievable play there as well.
and he's pleading his case right now on the field. And again, they, they called it incomplete. So that's part of the story also. Gene, you ever just give the benefit of the doubt because it was a great effort? <laughs> <laughs> you know what, Ross? This is what I love when I listen to these back and forths here. It does take me back a few years and oh. and how much of, uh, players, coaches are pleading the case, and they are so sure about it, you know? Uh, and then all of a sudden we get this look, and, and then you can't find them. You kind of want to look back and say, where were you? You were so confident 10 seconds ago. <laughs> I mean, how about a little something for the effort, right? Yeah, I mean, it's a great almost play you know if they had called it interception correct i'd be curious if they thought it was enough to overturn it but i don't i don't think they're going to overturn it here all right here we go here's the answer after review the ruling on the field stands it is an incomplete pass all right so they say it stands and gene we appreciate it as always it does not defeat what cj taylor just did and this is why nfl scouts like him so much watch his reaction when they come up with the decision I mean, add it to the list, right? Add it to the list of all the close calls for Vandy. Tell you what, he's an impressive kid. It's third down now, third down and two. Now they do have two tight ends in, even without Bowers. They've run it in this situation so far today. Lucky is the extra tight end. They give it up to Edwards. Taylor tried to stop him. He couldn't, and Edwards gets toward the first down marker. And this will all depend on the spot. I think he got it again. Unbelievable how Georgia keeps getting these first downs on third and fourth and short by just the nose of the football. That's Nate Clifton, who we talked to yesterday. The graduate, excellent player, and he's the injured Vanderbilt player down on the field. They'll tend to him, 9.55 to play third quarter. A decision from the officials when we get back. <laughs> Clifton uh, did get up. He walked off on his own. By the way, here we go. He says the play clock to 40 seconds and start the clock, game clock on my signal. Yeah, so they did rule a first down as we went to timeout, went to our break. So it's first and 10 for Georgia. They continue to rack up these first downs. You know, 17 to Vanderbilt's five. Let's love it in motion. Cash Jones is in for the first time. They fake to him. They throw to the left, and I don't think that Ra Ra Thomas had that. It's incomplete. 9.38 to play here in the third quarter. Should have caught it. Right side of your screen. Now, that was a low throw from Beck. It wouldn't have been an easy catch for Ra Ra Thomas. That's one where Ra Ra almost has to change his hands, right? He had his hands up like this. You got you to scoop that almost like you're getting a handoff. Second down and 10. Again, Delp is in for the injured Brock Bowers. As Tiffany reported earlier, Bowers is out with the lower leg injury. Beck tosses it to Bell, and Bell trying to break a tackle, dives forward, looks like he's close to a first down. Rinaldi with the tackle. Watch 71, Ernest Green get the key block. 71, right side is right there. You know, it's not easy when you're 320 pounds. Watch Gumbo Gaskin. He's going to get wiped off the screen, right? Now. That's all he needed. Close to a block in the back, I but was it was okay. That, yeah. It was from the side. It was close. But they usually give you the benefit of the doubt if you're coming from the inside out like that. Well, this is a long drive time-wise for Georgia. On first down, Beck. Well, he's got plenty of time. He's going to think about running it. He'll roll to his right. Not much is there. And he trips through the SEC logo. Langston Patterson makes the tackle. So it'll be second down. His decision making, Beck's decision making, for a guy that hasn't played a whole lot, that's what stands out, I think. He's always so calm, too. Very calm. Kirby Smart talked about that. Remember, he's a pitcher that threw in the 90s. And Kirby Smart said, listen, when you're a pitcher, there's a lot of pressure on you. You're on that mound by yourself to throw a strike, and he thinks that's why Beck is so calm in these big moments. On second down, love it. Love it's got a block along the sidelines, and he's close to a first down. I think he's got it. He, he does to the 18. Gumbo Gaskins made the tackle. And how about the last drive at the end of the first half in this one, how long they are? Yeah, Gumbo Gaskins gets that left hand in there. Mahoney gives an extra shot there. He's lucky. He didn't get penalized there. 
from Mahoney. But this is, you know, it sounds weird, Tom. This is what Vanderbilt wanted to do on defense. They wanted to force Georgia to have to go on long, sustained drives. But Georgia just been up to the challenge. Beck is hit as he throws, incomplete. Boy, he was nailed. Capers came in. He got close earlier on this drive. Number 30 is in the area. Second down. And they say it's not intentional grounding because Edwards was in the area. Right, so Beck did not get out of the pocket. And he didn't get the ball back to the line of scrimmage. But Edwards was close enough. That's a heads-up play by Beck. You know, we talked earlier in the game, Tom, where Ken Seals took a sack that you just can't take. Beck's doing a really nice job of not taking those sacks, not taking those negative plays. Sometimes he runs for yardage. Other times he just gets rid of the ball like right there. And, and the other thing too, Ross, this is back-to-back -back drives now. That's 16 plays. This will be the 17th play of this drive. Delps in motion. They hand it off to Edwards. Running right, not, nothing there. It's Capers again, the junior from Sumter, South Carolina, who makes the tackle. And this is the play now for Vanderbilt. You got him in third and nine. You're making them go the long, hard way. They gotta find a way to get a stop here and hold Georgia to a field goal attempt. Keep it a three-score game. Yeah, so seven of ten on third downs is Georgia. This is a lengthy one, though. Interesting that Lad McConkey not in the game in this situation. The man-to-man -man covers at the top of the screen. Yeah, Lovett's in the slot at the top. He's number six. Beck dancing in the pocket. Looks left. Not much is there. Rolls. Pressure's coming. Taylor slows him up, and he's hit and taken down. Nate Clifton is back in the game and making his presence known. But give credit to C.J. Taylor, and that's a huge stop. And I just talked about Beck not taking sacks, and then that one was a bad one. Watch Beck, because Vandy showed man, and then they went out to a zone. He didn't find anybody. Really good coverage by Vandy, and even when he bought time, nobody was open. I'll credit Beck for not throwing the ball up for grabs and getting a turnover. At least he reserved the right to kick this field goal attempt. Yeah, this will be a 44-yard field goal attempt. Taylor was slow to get up, but he is off the field. Ideally, Beck would have not taken that sack and thrown it away, but better to take the sack and still be in field goal range than to just throw it up for grabs. Freshman's longest field goal of the year is 42. This one will be 44 yards. Beck is the holder. Good snap. Good hold. Kick is on its way. It's got plenty of leg, and it is good. The freshman, career long, season long, 27-7. Georgia's on top. Man, did they chew up some clock. Tennessee, Georgia's on top, 27-7 over Vandy. And Vandy will get the football. The NFL on CBS streams live on Paramount Plus all season long. Go to ParamountPlus.com slash NFL to get started. By the way, they were, they were looking at C.J. Taylor again on the sidelines. He's going in the tent for Vanderbilt now. The outstanding uh, anchor defender. And to talk to him yesterday, what a great kid with a bright, bright future. All right, so Vanderbilt's going to get it for the first time in the second half. How about that last drive and how much time it took? Eight minutes and 38 seconds. And, and he, look, obviously Vanderbilt doesn't want to give up points, but that's the game plan. The game plan is to force Georgia to go the long, hard way, not give up explosive plays, and then when they get in the red zone, hold them to a field goal. Yeah, that, that's, a, that's a winning series for Vanderbilt based on what they built this game plan around. Yeah, we mentioned Clark Lee sat in with uh, Tim Corbett, the baseball coach, in one of his meetings, and he called it uh, RBI defense. This kickoff is going to be short. McGowan, though, will call for a fair catch. And Vanderbilt will get it for the first time in the second half. Let's take a look at the Ford game changer. Well, I think you have to go with early in the game. Tyke Smith, right? He got beat with a mental error. Kirby Smart talked to him, said, hey, we'll be okay. Then he came back at the end of the first half, had the tackle, had that key interception. I mean, that was a two-score swing because it led to the Georgia touchdown at the end of the half. I love when a young man bounces back after making a critical error early in the game. That's life, right? 
You can have a bad play. You can't have a bad day. Cedric Alexander will run it for the first time, and Alexander tries to drag his defender. He got a few yards. It's Malachi Starks. Second on the team in tackles. First time we've called his name today. Started all 14 games last year as a true freshman. He'll be one of the next Bulldogs in a couple years. Hearing his name called more than likely in the first round of the NFL draft. He is fantastic. One of the next of many. Second down at seven. McGowan is in the backfield. Kind of a gadget guy. Justin Ball, the tight end, is off the line of scrimmage in the slot. And Seals throws to his right, has McGowan. Along the numbers, McGowan is able to get a first down and more. Malachi Starks makes the tackle. To have that kind of a player, a game of 20, have that kind of a player is huge for any program. And this is the best they've used him in a while. McGowan's in the backfield. He'll run that angle route again, and he's wide open. That's another dropped coverage by the Bulldogs. They lost McGowan. If I'm Vanderbilt, I'm coming back to that play yes. again. Yeah, they talked maybe, to us. Maybe a couple times. That's They're two for two with that play. Why don't you make Georgia show that they can stop it? Yeah, they talked to us yesterday. He was involved those first couple weeks, but then hasn't been. Will Shepard has been quiet, is in motion. Seals, pressure's coming. Dumps it off. He dumps it off to the back end of the backfield, Alexander. And Alexander gets inside Georgia territory. And it'll be second down at five. Let's check in with Tiffany. Guys, we know Ken Seals has been on quite the journey here at Vanderbilt from being a starter to being a third-string quarterback. And he talked to us about how he struggled to find his identity, you know, not being a starter anymore. He said he had been a starter his entire career. So it was an adjustment period for him, one that, Ross, you could actually relate to going through your NFL career. No question, Tiffany. I mean, you know, everybody's always praising you in your hometown, and then you get cut. And you go back to middle of nowhere, Pennsylvania, and people don't know what to say to you anymore. Yeah. Second down at five, Seals overthrows his intended receiver. You know, we asked Seals about, you know, this construction, how what this shows him. And uh, he's, you know, he's impressed by it. He loves it. And he pointed out toward this area. He said, what I think about is that's where I'm going to own a luxury suite. <laughs> <laughs> well, listen, you go to Vanderbilt, you got a pretty good chance to have a luxury suite at some point, right? And that's the thing about this program. They got a lot to offer, Tom. Oh, yeah. I mean, you're in Nashville. It's a top 15 school. You're playing in the SEC. And now that they get the facilities, they're going to get even more young men that want everything that Vanderbilt has to offer. Big third down here for Vanderbilt. Down 27-7. Seals, pressure's coming. He's got a truck. Try to get away. He can't. The flag comes in as that pass was intended for McGowan. A lot of contact from Malachi Starks there. Credit Seals for just getting rid of that football. At the and, feet. And, right, and not taking the sack. Prior to the pass being thrown, holding of the defense number 24, that 10-yard penalty will be enforced from the previous spot, and it carries an automatic first down. All right, so, you know, they only had one first down on the field. This is their second one. Right side of your screen, 24 Starks. I don't know. Tom, that, that, that was close to me. I mean, obviously, there was some contact there, but it seems like a lot of times here in the SEC, they let that go. They let them play. But I think because of where the ball went and McGowan's reaction, he was able to almost draw that penalty. Well, Vandy will take it. It's a first down. Not many penalties called today. Georgia showing blitz. They give it off to Alexander. Alexander is able to dive forward. Down to the 33. Kamari Lassiter makes the tackle. Oh, Joey Lynch, the offensive coordinator, third year as the offensive coordinator. And it's interesting to see Vanderbilt taking as much time in the huddle as they are. I mean, I know that it's been a solid performance so far, but they're still down three scores. And with the way Georgia moved the ball in their last possession, Vanderbilt doesn't know how many more they'll get. I think we got movement. It's going to go against, I believe, Vanderbilt, but we'll see. Illegal snap on the offense number 62. That's five yard penalty. Remains second down. You know, it's a good point, too, because Georgia can do so many things. They can score quickly, but they used eight minutes and 38 seconds on the last drive before they got the field goal. Right. And I think with three minutes left in the third quarter, I know what Vanderbilt's game plan is, right? You know, Clark Lee told us yesterday 
anytime Georgia's offense is on the sideline, that's a good thing for us. We're possessing the football. We're keeping their explosive offense on the sideline. But at some point, you have to look and say, we got, we got an opportunity to maybe win Another this game. game. Right. Yeah, I mean, let's let's make it a two-score game. We need a touchdown, and we need it pretty quick. Think about Stanford last night against Colorado. Yes. Second down off the penalty. Seals. Dancing in the pocket. Throws to the outside. Alexander. Alexander trying to make a man miss. He does, and he dives forward for the first down. And he's going to be awfully close. Tyke Smith was in on the coverage. I think Kirby Smart wanted him out of bounds before that first down marker. Another time Vandy has time to throw. I mean, that's a lot of time for Seals. And he hits the running back out of the backfield. The one thing you notice watching Georgia's defense this year, Tom, they don't have the first round picks on the D line. I mean, they're still NFL players, and maybe some of the young guys will be first round picks, but you don't see Jalen Carter, you don't see Nolan Smith, you don't see all those guys that basically play for the Philadelphia Eagles now. <laughs> Under three minutes to play, Seals dumps it off on the outside. Cheryl, and he's out of bounds. How about Will Shepard has not gotten a football today? He's gotten some targets, but no catches. Well, credit Georgia for that a little bit, right? They've done a nice job of not letting Shepard be the guy that beat him. Ten, top ten in school history, receptions, yards, touchdowns. Has eight touchdowns already, but this is his part of the field. Right. We're, we're getting to the red zone. That's Shepard's part of the field. But look, there's safety help over the top. So bottom of your screen, there's only one receiver there, but he has safety help over top of him. Seals will look elsewhere. Second down at eight. Seals looking to the right, pressure's coming, he doesn't see it, he just throws it away. He needed to throw it away because not only was Chambliss, but also the rest of the defense coming after him. So, with Vandy being down 20 points, right, and we got less than 17 minutes in the game, I don't think a field goal really helps him all that much. So, in my mind, if I'm Clark Lee, I'm already telling Joey Lynch, you got two downs to get eight yards, right? Or what does a field goal do for you? It goes from being a three-score game to a three-score game. So they have two downs now, in my mind, to get these eight yards. And they got the bunch set to the left. A third down. Seals. He has time, and he overthrows his intended receiver. It was Humphreys, and now it's fourth down. So Clark Lee has a book that he goes by in terms of these decisions. There's no hesitation here. They're going to go for it, and this is the right decision to go for it. Yeah, as you said, you're down 27-7. You have not had the season you expected off of last year. Getting a couple of SEC victories. They're 5 of 16 on fourth downs this year. This is a long one, though. And Shepard is in the slot to the left along with McGowan. So we'll see if for the... Now Shepard's out wide. We'll see if Seals give them a 14 an opportunity. Yeah, just to try to let him make a play. Pressure's coming. Seals rolls the pocket to the right. Throws on the run, and it is caught. Wow! Shepard diving catch inside the five. Well, he gave an opportunity, all right. Vandy's going to go hurry up right on the football. This is usually quarterback sneak or quick inside zone give to the running back. First trip to the red zone this year. He's going to keep it himself and into the end zone, but this play's blown dead. Are they going to look at the last play? Prior to the snap, the previous play is under review. Let's take a look. Oh, that's a beautiful catch. He's got it. That is a beautiful catch by Will Shepard. That is incredible. We just said, is he going to give him a chance or not? That's his guy. And Shepard rewards Seals for the opportunity. Love the fact, by the way, that Vanderbilt tried to snap that ball really quickly because, you know, I mean, in case it wasn't a catch, you don't want to give the replay guys a lot of time to look at. All right, but if you're Clark Lee, are you upset that they blew this dead? It looked like it was fairly obvious. Yes, I am, but what are you going to do about it? I mean, <laughs> I they got, it, it's a critical it. play. <laughs> they got to take a look at it. It's a critical After the play. Review, the ruling on the field is confirmed. Is it a catch? First down, Vanderbilt. Yeah, Clark Lee is upset on the sidelines. He he is being held back by one of his coaches. I think his thought was the same thing, that we had a chance to go right into the end zone. I understand, but they need to do that. By the way, I, I give them the officials credit there. When it's that obvious, they don't need to go under the hood, right? All right, 
Well, here we go. It'll be first and goal from the one yard line. Alexander is in the backfields. So they went with a zone read on the last play. Man, when you're this close, you just got to run it, right? I mean, <laughs> whether it's the running back Alexander or it's Seals taking it himself, they got a big offensive line. Use them. Two tight ends in the ball game and some shifting going on. And I think one of the tight ends, Cameron Johnson, moved. Ball start on the offense, number 48. Five-yard penalty that remains first down. So what Georgia did there is that's called stemming the front. They move the defensive line laterally, and look at the right side of your screen, 48. They move laterally, and he flinches. Mm. He's a freshman tight end. This might be as loud of a stadium he's, as he's ever been in at that moment, and he sees those guys move, and it flinches him a little bit. That's smart by Georgia to call that stem of the front up front. So with 104 to play in the third quarter, it's a five-yard penalty, moves it back to the six. Remember, Shepard is still the touchdown maker. He's at the top of your screen, man-to-man -man against Leverett. Here's McGowan, jet sweep to his left. Nothing's there, and he is stopped. Bullard, the junior. Tyke Smith, the senior, came in to clean it up. Well, I've watched enough Georgia football that you're not going to make a lot of money running laterally against those guys. I mean, their linebackers and secondary run so well. Look at all. I mean, even if Ford doesn't make that play, Munden was gonna. They even got defensive line in the frame. So it'll be second and goal. Clock is winding under 20 seconds to play third quarter. A lot of Georgia fans here. This place is alive. Shepard is now in the slot to the right. He is terrific body control. They hand it off, and Alexander gets down maybe to the three-yard line. And Smile Munden makes the tackle. And that's going to be the end of the third quarter. Each team has possessed the ball one time in this quarter. Can Vanderbilt punch it in? We'll find out when we come back for the fourth quarter. Start of the fourth quarter. Let's check in with Tiffany with Kirby Smart. Coach, your defense putting the pressure on. What do you all need to do to get a stop right here? We need a red zone stop bad, guys. We got a chance right here, third down. We're probably going to probably going to go forward if they don't get it. So we got to hold them here two downs. Thanks, Coach. Well, here we go. It's third down and goal from the three yard line. Seals is pointing out the Mike linebacker. Shepard's at the top of the screen here. They're definitely going to go for on fourth down if they don't get this. Alexander in the backfield. Seals looking toward the goal line. Pass is complete. Touchdown. Richie Hoskins is second of the year. tight end he runs up Hoskins comes underneath so ball the tight end's gonna run off and watch the defender gets caught up that's not a pick that's a rub that's what the offense calls it Hoskins wide open terrific play call there by Joey Lynch well here's the thing Vanderbilt had not been in the red zone until that moment and they score in their first trip the point after is good Keep this in mind, Vanderbilt hadn't scored a point against Georgia since 2019, hadn't scored a touchdown since 2018. Now they got two. With ink. And usually, Tom, you know how this goes. The play of the game hasn't happened yet. Well, that's true. I mean, we got a two-score game. Vanderbilt is hanging. They've been waiting to have this breakout performance this season. And... To be down only two scores here, fourth quarter against the number one team in the country. We got a ball game, man. Yeah, they've won 23 straight, Georgia has. And again, Vanderbilt is underachieved this year. And I think everybody around the country and everybody on this campus understands that. News is going to return this one from the two yard line. And News is hit at the 15, wow. spins away. Langston Patterson made the initial hit. Coming up next, we're headed to Knoxville for the second game of today's SEC on CBS Doubleheader when Texas A&M takes on 19th-ranked Tennessee. The SEC is on CBS and streaming on Paramount+. Plus. Hey, it's not too far if you want to get in your car and go. You might get there by the second half, <laughs> depending on who's driving. If I'm driving, we will get there by the, end of, by the beginning of the second half. I thought you said you were going to take me in your helicopter. Well, it is very affordable. I could do that. <laughs> Hey, listen, I know Vanderbilt's strategy to, you know, kind of let Georgia 
had the underneath stuff. They need a three and out, though. I mean, they need to be a little more aggressive here. Here's Lovett on the outside, and Lovett, using his athleticism, gets a first down, or at least close to it. A gain of 10. Maloney, Mahoney Mahoney made the tackle. Vanderbilt can't afford to let Georgia go on another one of those long clock eating drives. They're going to have to be a little bit more aggressive on this drive, and that could lead potentially to a big play by the Bulldogs, but that's the chance Vanderbilt has to take. Yeah, I mentioned before, the last drive to open up the half was 8 minutes and 38 seconds. On first down. Delp, again, he's in there for the injured Brock Bowers. Wow. Edwards, he pressed the juke button again. He pressed it three different times. And he's inside Vandy territory. I mean, this guy's outrageous. Watch his stop start. I mean, watch this right here. Whoop! Are you <laughs> kidding me? And again, I mean, these guys can't even lay a hand on him on some of these jukes. Yeah, Ducati had him, but, and then missed him. I have a question. How do you even know that you can do that? And how do you learn to do that? I mean, that's unbelievable, uncanny, the lower body strength he has to just pop laterally like that. On first down, they shovel it to Edwards, and Edwards is able to break a tackle down to the 40-yard line. Actually, they're going to mark him close to the 39. Gain of eight yards. And listen, Georgia is putting the pedal down again. Now Georgia thinks they've got Vanderbilt on the ropes. They're not going slow anymore. Oh, they're going to go Edwards again, and Edwards barrels his way toward the first down marker. He's about a yard shy. It'll be third down and one. And by the way, C.J. Taylor is back in. He's tying his, his shoes right now at the 41 for Vanderbilt. Remember, he was a slow to get off the field earlier today. Look, Look at, at the time of possession for Georgia. 60 plays. And I've said this a couple times today, Top. This is four down territory for Georgia. Mm -hmm. They'll probably run it here just to get the first down and keep the clock moving. But they could elect to take. Oh, early oh, snap. That's a bad snap. Edwards picks it up off the turf. The flag comes in. They're going to blow this dead. You had two tight ends moving as the ball was snapped. Wow. And again, Bowers is out. And Bowers would be one of those the guys. The offense has never set for one second. Therefore, it is a false start on the offense. Five-yard penalty. And it remains third down. So that's, by the way, why they blow the play dead. Because it's a false start since they never got set. So you might be sitting there thinking, well, why doesn't Vandy decline the penalty and take the loss of yardage there? You don't have an opportunity to decline a false start penalty. All right, so moves the ball back to the 43. So now third down and six. Still no McConkie in the game for Georgia. So then Love it in the slot to the left becomes the other guy they like on these choice routes. He has 63 yards in the air. Pass is complete. Delp's got it. And Delp down to the 31. Again, there's no Brock Bowers out with a first half injury. And Delp steps up to make the catch. But that's just too soft for Vanderbilt, right? I mean, it's third down. Understand the situation. They're going to run to the sticks and turn around. That's too easy of a conversion there for Georgia. Well, now the clock winds under 12 minutes to play here in the fourth quarter. And Georgia's on top 27-14. McConkie is back in. Beck takes the snap. He's looking toward the end zone, looking toward the middle, and it is incomplete. Ra-Ra Thomas went sliding in the middle of the field and couldn't pick it up. Gumbo Gaskins, the, the uh, first-year player, basically, was in on the coverage. Really good coverage by Gumbo. I mean, he's right there. I don't see any contact. Reaches the left hand in there. The ball definitely hits the ground. We talked about the fact that Vandy was going to have to be a little bit more aggressive. Putting Gaskins in man-to-man -man coverage against Ra Ra Thomas is certainly aggressive, but he was up to the challenge. Second down and ten. Edwards again in the backfield. We haven't seen Milton in the second half. Quick toss to the outside. Love it. And Love it had that play earlier on this drive, and he gets a, close to the first down marker. Kind of feels like Georgia can do that anytime they want it. I right? think the so same thing. They call those access throws these days, where if you're playing off coverage, there's only one Vandy defender out there. There's two Georgia receivers. So you throw it to the one receiver, the other guy blocks for him, and there's a lot of room to run. So third down and one. Beck to Edwards. Edwards lowers his shoulder, and he's got a first down. He moved Ethan Barr inside the 20 to the 19. 
Edwards now 14 carries 68 yards. Yet another third down conversion by Georgia. This is kind of like last year where Vandy got him in a bunch of third downs, but Georgia just finds a way to convert these third and fourth downs. Nine of 13 so far on third downs. And again, up 13, clock continues to run. Big difference, too, for Georgia here between a field goal and a touchdown. Field goal, it's still a, a two-score game. Edwards again. And Edwards is thrown down by Nate Clifton. Short game. Again, it's been all Edwards. Milton had a wrap on his leg earlier in the ball game. They usually split time, those two guys, for Kirby Smart. Well, and Milton had been having one of his best games of the season. Milton was playing excellent up until that point. And so now they really have their third string running back in there. Yeah, Cash Jones, the uh, redshirt sophomore from Brock, Texas. A little different runner. On second down, Beck. He's got Jones. And Jones is shuttled out of bounds. De Cosmo takes him out. And he's shy of the first down. Another third and short, though, here. And Georgia's M.O. has just been a quick inside zone give to Cash Jones on a lot of these plays. Everybody turns back to the sidelines to see what the play is for Georgia. The number one team in the country. It's a six-man box on defense. So Vandy has an extra guy in there to stop the run. Capers showing blitz. Back rolls the pocket. Throws on the run. Short hops his intended receiver. It was intended for Delp. Ra Ra Thomas was in the area too. So now it'll be fourth down. And here comes the place kicker for Georgia. Yeah, I think I agree with this decision because I know it's still a two-score game. But then Vandy has to get two touchdowns and two two-point conversions. So this is the right decision to make sure you go up by 16 in my mind. Because even if a two-point play is a 50-50 proposition, now you're making Vandy have to do it twice. Yeah, Woodring's also already two for two today. This will be a 30-yarder. He's made a career-high 44-yarder this afternoon. Good snap, good hold, and the kick is good. All right, so it's 30-14, to two-score game, 9.05 to play. Here in the fourth first on rack teams in his last 116 games. Well, here we got a two-score game, and Vanderbilt will get it back. I don't know how many people thought this would be a two-score game with nine minutes left in the fourth quarter. And not just a two-score game, but Vanderbilt's about to get the football, and they're coming off one of their best drives of the game. You know, if you're looking for tangible progress from Clark Lee and his program, you're seeing it today. Yeah, he talked about winning certain battles. He's won certain battles. Now, the ultimate battle is to win the game itself, but he has won internally some things that he has talked about to his team leading up to this one. All right, Gillespie and McGowan are back deep to receive for Vanderbilt. And Georgia on top by two scores. We'll go back on defense. Well, that is a heck of a kick. Ooh, that almost went into the construction zone. He almost site. made it into the construction zone. <laughs> We'll take a timeout and be back. 9.05 to play here in the fourth quarter. Ming takes on undefeated Air Force, and San Diego State is on the road taking on Hawaii. That Wyoming Air Force game is going to be awesome. Yeah. I mean, Air Force is playing fantastic this year, and Wyoming, now they're on the road. Nobody wins at Wyoming. It's unbelievable. I mean, you, you watch <laughs> these games, whether it's Texas Tech or Fresno State. Let's we'll see if they can carry that onto the road and let's see if Vanderbilt can carry over what they did on the last series. Yes, yeah, Cedric Alexander's in the backfield. We haven't seen much of Chief Smith. Alexander's the freshman from Austin, Texas. Seals, the quarterback, zips one. He's got his tight ends, Justin Ball, and Ball gets up to uh, the 34-yard line, a gain of nine. Smile Munden makes the tackle. What do you think of Seals today? 18 of 25, 196. Been very solid. He had the, the one interception that was costly. He also had a sack that he shouldn't have taken, but he's he's given them a steady presence at the quarterback position, which is what they really wanted and needed. But what I don't like, Tom, is how much time they're taking. Yeah. I mean, Shepard doesn't even know where to line up right now. Tick, 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 tick. I mean, you're still, you need two touchdowns and two two-point conversions. Yeah, under eight and a half to play, down 16. Humphreys in motion. 
They hand the ball off. Oh, oh, man. oh man, was that a read? How about Michael Williams? Wow. Well, I said Georgia might not have some of the same guys up front. That's a guy. Number 13, Michael Williams, going to come from the right side of your screen right there. Look at him lock out the left tackle and make the play. Wow. I mean, he's really thought of as a pass rushing defensive end. To be able to lock out the tackle, extend and make the play shows he can do both. Third and short here for Bandy. Listen, this is four down territory again at this point in the game. Yeah, they've only converted two, two of seven. See zone coverage from Georgia here, zone. And a bunch formation up top for Vanderbilt and movement. Looks like the left side of that offensive line may have moved. False start on the offense, number 64. Five-yard penalty, and it remains third down. All right, former offensive lineman, how crushing is that? Very crushing, but if you're as big as Xavier Castillo is, they're going to know when you move. 6'5", yeah. 361. What did you play at highest weight? I used to go to camp between 320 and 325, so I could play at like 315. Oof. I was 335 on my wedding day, though. The heaviest day of my life. <laughs> not many people can say that. Well, there's not many pictures about it either. <laughs> All right, so third down and seven. Of this 16-point game, this is a big one. George is showing blitz. Seals to his left. And in and out of the hands of his intended receiver, Junior Sherrill. But here's the thing. He was still going to be shy of the first down marker. Even if he caught it, he wasn't going to get the first down. And I don't love Vanderbilt punting it here. They tried to have the two inside receivers run him off. Excellent coverage there by Georgia. And I know it's not great odds to pick up a fourth and seven. But the way Georgia's been moving the ball and, and possessing it, you punt the ball here. I mean, heck, you might not even get it back the way George is doing it. Well, Muse back deep to receive. But again, the wind has been a problem. Muse calls for the fair catch and has it near the 30-yard line. 7-0-1 to play here in the fourth quarter. Georgia, the number one team in the country, up 16. Be impressed a little bit. We'll see what they do to receive. Georgia's on top by 16 with 7-0-1 to play here in the fourth quarter. Time permitting, Adam, Rick, and BJ put a bow on this one and bring you the day's best highlights on the U.S. Army post-game show. Doubleheader Saturday here on CBS. So for right now, obviously, Georgia wants to run as much clock as they can, salt this game away. It's essentially four-minute offense here. We're just trying to run clock. Vanderbilt has to and is going to be aggressive to try to stop them. So there's an opportunity here for Georgia to get an explosive play. See Georgia's offense, seven possessions, three touchdowns, three field goals, one giveaway. Muse takes the shovel pass, and it's read beautifully by C.J. Taylor. I will tell you that if this is an audition for him, he stepped up his game. I mean, I'm so happy for that young man to have this opportunity. Right side of your screen, he sees it coming. He beats the block of Delp, goes low, and that's exactly how you want to start this drive if you're Vanderbilt's defense with a negative yardage play to get Georgia behind the chains. Now they probably can't just try to run the ball down your throat. Yeah, so second down and long. Again, Delp playing a lot more today with Bowers' injury in the first half. Bowers is an excellent blocker, and Taylor will intercept the football. He's inside the 10, the 5, trying to shoulder his way to the end zone, and he's knocked out of bounds by Beck. What wow. a hit by Carson Beck! That is one of the best... Oh, no. Yeah, Taylor is hurt. Oh, He no. got picked up earlier. He's holding his left knee. Oh. Uh, no, no, no. No, the athletic training staff was over there quickly. They'll take care of him. Clark Lee is there as well. 6-17 to play here in the fourth quarter. Beck with his with the interception there, his fourth of the season. The ball, I think, got tipped at the line of scrimmage. And I thought Taylor was going to walk into the end zone. Yeah. What an effort by Carson Beck to wow. lay his body on the line. And then his leg just got caught. Taylor's did. We'll take a time. Helped off the field. He got up during that timeout. Was uh, being sort of carried off. And then he decided to walk himself. Here's the play off the interception. 
I can't believe Carson Beck did oh. that. Most quarterbacks would not do that, and that might save a touchdown. Yeah. Carson Beck laying his body on the line for the Bulldogs. Well, first and goal from the one. It's 30 to 14. Seals. To Alexander into the end zone. Touchdown, Commodores. And now they'll go for two here. Yeah, they got to stop celebrating and get back in the huddle. Yep. They need the two point conversion. It's inside zone to the left. Well blocked. Dumas Johnson came with the blitz, and Starks was too late to get there. Well, they had the turnover earlier in the game. They didn't get any points. They had the turnover here, and they get six and possibly eight. They'll go for two. So Shepard is at the top of the screen, but they've got a corner and a safety up there. It looks like Starks might be coming with a blitz. If Starks comes with a blitz from the top, you throw the ball to Shepard at the top of the screen. Alexander in motion, the running back off the play fake. Seals has it tipped at the goal line. The two-point conversion is denied. Kamari Lassiter got his hand on it. Vanderbilt makes it a 10-point game. The interception by Taylor, knocked out at the one. Sets out the uh, fourth quarter. Commodores, 49-yard receiving touchdown on the first drive. Zero points the next five possessions, but now two touchdowns the last three possessions. Again, it's a two-score game with not a lot of time left against a high-power Georgia offense. Right, which is why if you're Vanderbilt, I think you need to at least consider an onside kick here. But the wind is blowing the ball off the tee. Yeah, so if you can't get it to stay on the tee, you're gonna have somebody holding it. I don't know. I mean, do they ever do they ever work on onside kick with a guy holding on to the ball like that? That's I don't know. Really I've never question. seen that in my life. I think they're gonna kick it away, but if they had sort of a uh, a surprise on sides or a pooch punt mortar kick, something like that, this now would be a good time to use it. Down by 10. Vanderbilt will kick it off, and they do. Muse will let it go over his head and out of the back of the end zone. CBS Friday is all fun and games with the new game, Raid the Cage. Want big prizes? The cage is where it's at. Get in, get out, and you just may get rich. Hosted by Damon Wayans Jr. with co-host Jeannie Mai. New Raid the Cage, Friday night, 8 Central, here on CBS. All right, so Carson Beck, 29 of 39, 261 yards. He's thrown for 300 yards in three straight games coming into today. But this may be a, a dose of Edwards in on the backfield. Right, and remember the negative yardage play by Taylor took George's ability to just try to run the ball out because they had negative yards on the first down. That's McConkie in motion. They give it to Edwards. Edwards tripped up at the line of scrimmage, but still powers forward to the 32. Gumbo Gaskins makes the tackle. Edwards now 16 carries, 78 yards, Ross. Again, Milton has been out this whole second half. Uh, it'll be second down at three. So they, they're playing basically without uh, Xavier Truss, their offensive lineman, Brock Bowers, and now Milton. Right, you see Milton over there with something on his left knee. Georgia smartly taking the play clock. It should go below five seconds before they snap it. Every first down at this stage of the game is essentially worth almost two full minutes to the Bulldogs. Edwards again. Edwards got a first down and more. He's inside Vanderbilt territory. He could go. He's basically got one man to beat along the sidelines, and he's out of bounds. Jalen Mahoney knocked him out of bounds. That was the one guy. McConkie with another really good block. Well, watch the right side of your screen. This is what happens when you have everybody up near the line of scrimmage. Huge hole, and then he got a nice block downfield from McConkie. What a heads-up play by Ladd McConkie down the field, and obviously that changes things quite a bit. Now for Vandy, you got to hold him to a field goal. Touchdown for Georgia. It's a three-score game again. The game's out of reach. Field goal, you still have some chance. It's still only a two-score game. I would not be surprised if Georgia continues to run it to try to keep that clock moving. Edwards with his second 100-yard rushing game of the year. Dives inside the five. It'll be second and goal from the four. And if you're Clark Lee, I think you even consider calling timeouts now. Because if you score a touchdown, 
you're going to do an onside kick anyway. And you have a better chance when you have the ball on offense of stopping the clock or controlling the clock. Otherwise, they're going to let a lot of time go off this clock. Yeah, and as you mentioned, too, Georgia's content to just run the clock yeah. out here. I mean, Georgia wants a touchdown bad to Absolutely. make it a three-score game. But they want to take as much time off this clock as possible. They're doing a good job of it. Lucky and dealt the tight ends on the left side of the offensive line. Edwards has it again. Jukes to his right, down to the one. It'll be third and goal from the one-yard line. Still surprised no timeout? I am. Yeah, if I'm, if I'm Clark Lee, I, I would have called a timeout right there because you're either going to be down two scores or three scores. Now, at this point in the field, Georgia's going to go for it. So at this point, Georgia really has two downs to get the touchdown. And I don't really see them having to do anything else other than give the ball to Dijon Edwards. Although yeah. if I'm saying that, everybody else is saying that. And Beck keeping the ball or a play action pass probably be wide open. And they got the big guy. Yeah, Micah Morris. Fullback. Micah Morris, the offensive lineman, is in a fullback. They give it to Edwards to his right into the end zone. Basically untouched. And Georgia's up top, 36 to 20 with 3.13 to play here in the fourth quarter. Well, right in front of Edwards is Morris, the fullback. And Edwards just follows the big man. Usually plays left guard. There was nobody really there. He almost stumbled. Rinaldi overran the play, and that was an easy touchdown for the dogs. Yeah, Lunar Eclipse Day, he was able to uh, eclipse that defensive line. And now the point after by Woodring. Heck of an answer by Georgia. And Woodring's point after is good. It comes off the facing of the future luxury boxes. This run put Edwards over 100 yards. More importantly than anything else, it put them in position to score. And he just took it to the house. Milton talking to Edwards. Those two guys are very close friends. They build each other up. Milton's been injured and hasn't played in the second half, but Edwards has a career high in rushing attempts with 20, and he's two yards away from his career high in yards with 146. You know, it used to be back in the day, Tom, that somebody would want to be the sole running back and the bell cow get all the carries. Now I think these guys realize the value of splitting the carries and touches. Oh, yeah. By the way, the 146, uh, as we look again, is his career high in rushing yards. All right, so now Vanderbilt down 17. We'll get the ball back. Hey, time permitting, Adam Rick and BJ put a bow on this one and bring you the day's best highlights on huh? the U.S. Army Post Game Show. 17 point game. A lot of tosses here. Is that what you're looking well, at? Obviously, Eagles? Vanderbilt needs to score. They need to score fast. So they're in two minute offense now, and they need to try to get chunk yardage if they can. This is usually when Georgia is very opportunistic. They got their pass rushing package in on defense. And here they come. Seals to the near sideline. Humphreys tried a one hand one handed catch, but he couldn't reel it in. Lassiter was there on the coverage. He did have a half a step or so. But boy, Lassiter is good. He is. I mean, watch number three there. He is with him. He's in his hip pocket. He knew the route that Humphreys was running before he ran it. <laughs> Lassiter is a, a top five corner, and he's played so well this year. He's only helped his stock so far this season. Georgia four-man front. On second down, Seals underneath to his tight end ball. And ball's wrapped up and quickly taken down by Smile Munden. So now third down. And this is all four down territory now at this point in the game. That's not going to get it done for Vanderbilt. The underneath stuff, the clock moving like this. Yeah, they got to hurry up. They need to get out of bounds and they need to get chunk yardage. Third down, pressure's coming. He's going long for Shepard, and it is incomplete. Nearly intercepted by Bullard. Bullard and Lasseter took each other out on that one. Lasseter right there. Perfect coverage again, and Bullard tries to high point the ball. Just too many collisions there for him to be able to, be able to bring it in. And Vanderbilt's going to punt. 
Yes, yeah, so Georgia and Vanderbilt each with uh, buys next week. So I don't really understand punting here. I mean, you're kind of you're kind of right? you're kind of conceding in my mind. Well, Muse will grab this one at the 23 yard line. And Georgia will just try to run the clock out here. At least that's what you would anticipate. Right, Ross? Just run the clock out here. Yes, for sure. We are trying to get our hard hats on. We got a lot of construction going on, and we got two big melons here <laughs> that we're trying to get our CBS oh, hard man. hats on. A thousand percent this is going to yeah. be on social media. I love it. I love it. See? We got our hardworking crew. Look at our camera operators. They're wearing hard hats. They have to. And the construction workers have been trying to make sure that the scoreboard uh, to the back of the Georgia Bulldogs is structurally sound all game long because it has been windy. Kirby Smart kind of let us let us know yesterday it's going to be windy out. And uh, he's right as Cash Jones will take that one to the 27 uh, yard line. So if you're Clark Lee and Vanderbilt, I mean, you're not going to call timeouts now, right? I mean, if you, if you didn't, not if you punted on fourth down, if you down. punted right there, then you're not, you're not calling timeouts now to try to get the ball back. You're just going to let this game end. Yeah. So Georgia up 17, George is going to extend its winning streak. And there's a number of different streaks that they have going that are really impressive let alone be a number one in the country for as long as they have been. But we talked about it, Tom, at the start of the game. They certainly did not pick up where they left off against Kentucky. No, I you're mean, right. They, they wanted to keep that momentum going into the bye, but this was not nearly the performance they had last Saturday night. Here's Cash Jones again. And Jones, a few yards shy of the first down. It'll be third down. As the clock winds, under a minute 30 to play. I will say this. If you're a Vanderbilt fan, Vanderbilt alum, this is something you can build off of, Tom. I mean, this was really on both sides of the ball a pretty impressive performance. Think about the missed field goal, the fumbled center snap, the fourth and two where Milton barely got it. Right. Tyke Smith interception into the first half. Even the C.J. Taylor interception that was ruled not interception. I mean, Vanderbilt was a couple plays away from being right in this thing till the very, very end. A third down and two. Jones will try to run for the first down. He does, and he runs for a little bit more. In fact, he may run for a couple days. He's dragged down at the last moment. Same play. Savion Riley was able to take him down with 41 seconds left. It's a 57-yard run. Just inside zone to the right. It's the same play that Dijon Edwards just had the long run on to get the touchdown, and now Georgia can just take a knee. Yeah, Beck with victory formation. 25 seconds left. And that'll wind the clock down. And Georgia will extend its winning streak to 24 consecutive games as they win it by a final score of 37 to 20. And again, as we mentioned, there's a number of different streaks that Georgia has rolling right now. Most importantly is they're number one in the country, and they're now 7-0. It's their 13th 7-0 start in school history. Well, all of their streaks, the consecutive yeah, games, the regular season wins, the SEC wins. Look at that. I mean, those are ridiculous. We're talking about the SEC. Let's check in with Tiffany, who's with Kirby Smart. Hey, Coach Smart. You all were tested today by this Vandy team, but what did your team show you in the way they were able to respond to the early adversity? Well, we continue to be having a little bit of up and downs, but I thought we responded well. Came out and really won the middle, what we call middle eight minutes of the game, the last four, and then the first four. Offense put together a great drive. We just got to score touchdowns. Coach, losing Brock Bowers in this one, I know how much he means to this team, but how proud are you of the way this group was able to emotionally regroup? Oh, they're great. We had a couple guys go down. They stood up, rose up. It's been a long seven weeks, so we got a, a well-needed, much-needed uh, off week coming. Some lengthy drives for this offense. How is Carson Beck able to sustain those through his decision making? Good execution. We got to hit some explosives. You can't have 17, 18 play drives. You got to hit some explosives. Thanks, Coach. Congratulations. Thank you. Go Dogs.
Well, Kirby Smart's team has picked up another victory uh, here at Vanderbilt as they win this one. Kind of going away 37 to 20. Again, they lost Brock Bowers, which was huge early on, and they had to overcome that. And Clark Lee, well, I mean, his team did build on a few things. Time now for our play of the game presented by Jersey Mike's Sub. So Edwards, he had himself a big game. Milton's hurt, so Edwards has to pull off this huge run, which put him over 100 yards. Right, he got that terrific block downfield from McConkie. The game was really still in doubt until that Edwards run Edwards led to the touchdown. Left. And he will give it to Deja. Big hole right side. Did it get him out of bounds? Yeah, finally at the six. Well, that's Scott Howard with the radio call for the Georgia Bulldogs. The Georgia Bulldogs Sports Network and Georgia.